The city was on fire. A helicopter with reporters was circling above him. Reporter Kim chol Su was in touch. He was broadcasting from the scene. He was at the site of a fire in the Guern Mountains. The scene of the accident was discovered by chance during the shooting of wild animals. Firefighters gathered from different provinces as the fire started not so long ago. There was a bit of traffic on the roads to allow firefighters to pass. The sound of the siren could be heard from far corners. The number of fire trucks was astounding. The place, blazing with fire, burned like hell. It was impossible to fly closer. Reporter Kim chol Su ended the broadcast for the YNF channel. The firefighters who arrived were divided into teams. The first team went to fight the fire, the other to search. The most important thing was not to forget about security. There were a lot of fire crews on site, so firefighters should have been careful. Li Yudu is the head of the Jonggi First Team Center, Major. While Li Yudu was giving orders, the other firefighters prepared the area for the meeting. The Major ran there. Ko Ti Su, the head of the department, a colonel, was already sitting inside. He asked who Li Yudu was. Jin Ti Hian, the head of the department, a lieutenant colonel, joined the conversation. He suggested starting the briefing right away. At the moment, the fire continued to spread, so now all teams were working on extinguishing in groups of three people. The entrance to the factory is spacious, so it helped the fire trucks arrive at the scene as efficiently as possible. The only problem was in the victims. According to the applicant, a lot of people always work at the factory during the night shift. However, there is no name list, no location, no information about the time of leaving work, or how many people are left there. And there was no way to find out. Ko Ti Su thought, a drop of sweat dripping down his face. But there was nothing to be done, so it was necessary for the first squad to focus on finding victims. And with the exception of the firefighting team, everyone should start calling the plant's employees to find the missing. The head of the department took control of all the centers. The situation was dangerous. It was necessary to remember about safety and extinguish the fire more actively. Today the task was not to step on shadows. One of the firefighters ran to the meeting area. The first victim was found. They found a general chat of employees on his phone and determined who was at the factory now. It remains to find three victims. At the moment, the situation inside looked relatively safe, but the location of the people was not known. It was impossible to get into the depths of the plant. Everything was blazing with red flames. Firefighters were standing nearby. There were doubts whether people were inside. It was decided to go, but only had to hurry. Soon everything would collapse. Time and fire were merciless. A rapid reaction squad was called to help. A group of firefighters were already on their way to the scene. Kim T. Ryong, the head of the Jonggi Second Team Center, a major was surprised that a rapid reaction squad was called for reinforcements. Park D. Gon, the head of the base, a lieutenant colonel, has also heard about them. The chances of salvation have increased. Ho Su is the commander of the rapid reaction squad, senior sergeant. On the radio, he told the other squads that they would be there in three minutes. He was a legendary firefighter. It was not easy to get to the factory. It will take a lot of time and equipment to get inside. Ho Su was confident in his abilities. He asked to bring a large fire truck from the back of the scene. Upon arrival, he promised to explain everything. It was necessary to clear the road. Other firefighters did not understand why they would try to put a large fire truck there, because there was not enough space anyway. There was a rumor among the firefighters that the order came from the Rapid Response Unit. They were not responsible for this territory. Senior Sergeant Hosu was driving towards them. Many knew him only by hearsay, and were looking forward to his arrival. A Rapid Reaction Squad arrived. A handsome and handsome guy got out of the car. He was very young. It was Hosu, the commander of the Rapid Reaction Squad. Someone saw him for the first time in his life. The head of the department tried to greet Hosu, but he said that there was no time, he needed to get to work. The Rapid Reaction Squad took control. The chief's henchmen were shocked that he responded so rudely to their boss. No one believed that there was a way to fix something. Hosu climbed onto the fire truck and was ready to announce a plan of action. He needed six people who were ready to obey implicitly and ordered to get into the car in the order of priority. A lot of firefighters responded, he chose six and they got into the car. He ordered the others who were busy extinguishing the fire to hose down the fire truck at his signal. Everyone did not understand what he was doing and why to water the car. The car started, the headlights turned on. Hosu told everyone to hold on tight. At full speed, he began to drive towards the factory. At his signal, the others began to hose down the car. They made it through. A passage appeared. The commander was in shock. His legs staggered and he collapsed to the ground. He didn't believe what was happening. This story was about one person about a firefighter with special abilities. Computer center. The time is 10 in the morning. One of the guys was sitting and looking at a questionnaire for a firefighter candidate. To find out if the participant passed, it was necessary to enter the name and registration number. Sweat flowed from the guy's face. He moved the mouse slowly. He had fear. There was another guy sitting next to him. It was Ho Su 24 years old, unemployed. His friend called him to enter the registration number. They looked at each other, excitement in their eyes. The search button has already been pressed. 
Silk, a little earlier. 9.50, a little earlier. Hosu came with his friend to Megap Zone. They were wished a good time. Hosu stood in front of his friend and bowed his head, whispering the words that he had passed the exam for a firefighter. The friend was very happy for him, but the results were promised only in 10 minutes. Hosu received them a little earlier by SMS. He couldn't believe his friend was a firefighter. But the thing was, Hosu had one little secret. He could see the future. They broke up with a friend and agreed to meet in the evening. Hosu couldn't see the future whenever he wanted. Most often this happened when he had to update his equipment, while watching a horror movie or when he wanted to confess to someone he liked. He was sitting with a girl in a cafe and almost confessed how his plan had collapsed. Most likely, he could see the future when he was very excited. One of the reasons why he wanted to become a firefighter was the opportunity to use this ability. But as a child, when he first learned about it, there was a fire in the kindergarten, but Hosu knew which window the fireman would appear at. He will always remember this brave man. Hosu how he wanted to become the best firefighter. He wanted to see the firefighter who had saved his life again. Usually, when you are accepted as a firefighter, the headquarters of each province arranges a briefing for beginners. After it, all the newcomers must demonstrate the skills that every firefighter should have. After that, they gather for 15 weeks of intensive training. They are held at the Central Academy of Firefighters. Standing at the bus stop, Hosu looked at the time, he had to arrive at the Firefighters Academy on time. Sometimes there are moments of accidental eye contact. There was a guy sitting at the bus stop with a big bag and waiting for the bus at such an early hour. After asking each other, everything turned out, he was also going to go to the Firefighters Academy. At such moments, you are overjoyed to meet a person in a similar situation to yours. But then you regret some moments. The awkward silence was interrupted by a bus that pulled up to the stop. The guy sitting at the bus stop was the first to get on the bus. Having attached the card to the terminal, it was found out that he did not have enough funds. So Hosu paid the fare for two, and that guy promised to do it another time. The guys found two seats at the end of the bus and sat there. They were curious to get to know each other. The guy sitting at the bus stop was from Qingju. He knew Hosu from somewhere. He asked me to take care of him. Hosu still couldn't believe he was a firefighter. He had anxiety, but not as usual. He covered his face with his hands. He felt hot, sweat broke out on his face. The guy sitting next to him offered him a kimbap, but he was silent. Hosu was sweating profusely. He had a lead. He asked a Josie to stop the bus. The grandfather who was sitting in front of them fainted. No one understood what was going on except Hosu. He held Grandpa in his arms and asked Won Ho to help him. There was surprise on Won Ho's face as to how Hosu knew his name. Grandpa had a heart attack. Hosu saw everything that happened while they were driving. He saw how Grandpa would get sick, the driver would turn right, and he would fall from his seat. Seeing this, Hosu and Won Ho will run up to him and start trying to bring him to his senses. Beads of sweat were streaming from Hosu's face. Leaning against his grandfather's face, he would have realized that he had heart problems. Without thinking twice, Hosu rolled up his sleeves and began to do a heart massage. But here it is reality. Everything is really happening. Turn, foe. Hosu catches Grandpa. Calls Won Ho. Hosu starts heart massage at this time. Won Ho, not at a loss, asks the driver where the nearest hospital is. The driver was at a loss. Everything was happening very quickly. They didn't have time for empty conversations. It was an emergency. He wasn't breathing. Won Ho quickly began to make a chronological chain. How long ago their victim got on the bus? How much distance between stops? He believed that it was not too late to get to the hospital. The nearest hospital was Hospital 20. It would take about five minutes to get to it. After finding out all the factors, it's time to change. At this point, Won Ho began to do a heart massage. Ho Su sat aside with a shortness of breath. Won Ho told Ho Su to call the hospital and inform them that they were bringing them a patient who would need artificial ventilation, so that they are ready to receive the patient. Ho Su picked up the phone, dialed the number, and explained to the hospital that they were taking the victim. I asked them to prepare a ventilator and a stretcher. After the call, it was Ho Su's turn to do heart massage again. He asked fate to keep his grandfather alive. A moment later they reached the hospital. Near the building they were met by workers already with a stretcher. They were investigating all the circumstances of the incident. The guys hurriedly told everything. He fell unconscious. They realized that he had had a heart attack and started doing heart massage. The doctors were ready to do everything possible for him to survive. The victim was taken to the hospital. There was no further passage for Won Ho and Ho Su. All hope remained for the doctors. Ho Su and Won Ho stood a little lost and exhausted near the entrance to the operating room. They rolled down the wall and sat on the floor. They didn't believe that this was just what happened to them. At the moment, they raised their heads and their gazes converged. Ho Su thanked Won Ho for helping him. Won Ho looked impressive. Everyone could envy his composure. The only question that bothered him was how Ho Su could know that that grandfather had heart problems. Ho Su didn't know what to say because no one knew that he could see the future. Therefore, in order not to dwell too much on this moment, he simply replied that it was intuition. Won Ho believed his words, saying that Ho Su is very attentive. But not all cases were solved. 
They completely forgot about the opening ceremony. Quickly gathering themselves, they ran to the academy. Running to the academy, they came to the captain and explained the whole situation. He believed them, but decided to make inquiries just in case. Those who arrived on time have already unpacked their belongings. The training has also passed, now it's time for lunch. The boss ordered them to go to the dorm and change into their uniforms. Then go to the dining room and have lunch. Then see you at the meeting. After changing into a uniform, Wonho was inspired by memories that he was in the army. The delicious aromas of food came from the dining room. The cooking here was clearly different from the army. Opening the door, they saw a large number of people in uniform who were sitting and having lunch. A lot of sidelong glances fell on them. Ho Su and Wonho were not at a loss and sat down to lunch. The food was great. The dorm was supposed to be somewhere nearby. After a little searching, they found him. Everyone should have been there. Going to the door and pulling the handle inside the room stood a guy and dried his head. Ho Su and Wonho apologized for entering without knocking. The guy turned to them and realized that they were late guys. Looking at the time, he clearly made it clear to them that they were delayed. Wonho immediately warned that they had a problem. Big Song, who was the guy standing in front of them, he was 32 years old. Ho Su did not stay away and immediately introduced himself. Wonho followed his example. Beek Sung Woo was very pumped up and handsome, but it didn't surprise them much. It was more surprising that Won Ho and Ho Su are the same age. They agreed to talk to each other normally. Other guys came into the room with boxes. Ho Su immediately bowed. One of the arrivals was glad that the whole team was assembled. They already knew why the guys were late. Ho Su stood a little surprised why that guy called them a team. It turns out they were asked to form teams before they arrived. It's time to introduce each other. The captain of the team started first. He had to be responsible for his team until the end of the training period. His name was Park Jong Sok, and he was 28 years old. He was a newly minted firefighter. The next was Chang Pengge. He was 34 years old. He began to cry with happiness, because he dreamed of becoming a firefighter and when he saw his team, he could not contain his emotions. It was nice for him to meet everyone. The last member of the team, Yang Cho Han, is 26 years old. Beek Sun had already introduced himself, then Won Ho and Ho Su did it. Sounds were heard from the broadcasting device. A brief orientation took place. All the teams should gather in the auditorium a Chang Pengi could not believe that their training was beginning. In an even formation, the entire team left the room and headed to the auditorium. Scene. An elderly man was not standing on it. It was the director of the Central Fire Academy, Quack Tong Call. He greeted the students on behalf of the academy. Everyone present was once a civilian and now has become a firefighter. Many doubted whether they would be able to become real professionals, whether everything would be fine. Quack Tong Call did not promise that each of them would become a successful firefighter. If someone becomes unbearable halfway along the way, you could give up. There would be no shame in that. Firefighter is an honorable profession. However, not everyone can succeed just because of the crust in the academy. It is important to be able to save people in moments of danger. The lives of everyone present in this room are just as precious. A firefighter must have the skill to survive in any situation. To begin with, they had to do it here. He wished good luck and wanted to finish his speech but then asked if Mr. Ho Su and Won Ho were in the audience. They jumped out of their seats, showing themselves. They thought they would be punished for being late. Quack Tong Call said that the man they rescued came to his senses today. He praised them for their good work. They won't be counted late. The whole team was happy for their comrades. But in addition to Ho Su and Won Ho, there was a newcomer in the third team who broke all records in training. Quack Tong Call was looking forward to his new achievements. A ten-minute break was announced. The team captain began to think who it could be. Everyone looked at Big Sung Woo, but he immediately said that it was not his doing. This was his third attempt to get into the fire department. Then the options fell on all the other members. It couldn't have been Won Ho, because he could barely pull himself up. Ho Su remained. He became embarrassed. The whole team was delighted with his capabilities. Their team was the best. Training at the Central Fire Academy has really begun. Ho Su was standing by the sink brushing his teeth. Two weeks have passed since the opening ceremony. Constant training to be in shape. His head started to ache sharply. He squeezed his eyes shut from the pain. It started again. There was a vision in which he saw that their training was taking place. Guang Chang Su was distracted, the commander did not like it. Now life seemed to be passing by him. He just wanted to spend one day in peace. It was only possible on weekends. He knew it wouldn't be easy at first, but he never would have thought it would be so difficult. He was afraid that he would be able to come down because of such training. His thoughts were interrupted by Won Ho, who asked him to vacate the bathroom because he wanted to go to the toilet. He hurriedly vacated the room and went to the others. Ho Su got along well with all the guys. Everyone admired him. The team captain leads them well. Pengi, despite his appearance, turned out to be very vulnerable. Cho Han is very straightforward, but he is a cheerful type. The dream is terribly beautiful. Everyone was in the room except the captain. He left to clarify the details of today's training. Won Ho Su became the closest of friends. 
The captain returned and addressed all his comrades. He was trying to find Song Wu to tell everyone everything at once. The captain was bombarded with questions. He explained, rescue and firefighting training was planned for the morning. Therefore, it will be necessary to get dressed in uniform and split up. Everyone was upset. They hoped that they would be able to study the theory at least once. They were also told that they would work out descents. Chang Ren Nai started to panic. He was already scared. He started shaking Cho Han to make it less scary. The captain asked to hurry up, because in 10 minutes everything will start. The whole team began to dress for the training camp. One Ho, in order not to worry too much, decided to find out in advance about Ho Su whether everything would be fine. Without thinking twice Ho Su calmed One Ho. Putting on the helmet, he was still a little scared. Another vision. He saw One Ho gradually descending from the cliff. His insurance was tied to a handrail on the top floor. But at some point she couldn't stand it and One Ho flew down. The vision is over. Ho Su opened his eyes and abruptly started calling One Ho. One Ho stood by and asked how Ho Su was. A large amount of sweat was dripping from Ho Su's face. Won Ho asked if everything was okay, maybe Ho Su was sick. But he denied everything. Training time. Ho Su was called forward. He was told that he was next and he should prepare an oxygen tank. Everyone tried to dissuade him if he wasn't feeling well. Because of a bad result, the whole team could suffer. He was determined. But everyone warned him that if it was going to be bad, then he only had to tell about it. Putting on the balloon, Ho Su went forward. Wang Chang Su, Ho Su and another guy were ordered to fix the hose. The rest were given the command to start their day with a rescue training. Won Ho and Chang Peng Gi started transporting the captain. All this time, Ho Su and Won Ho were clashing eyes. Won Ho saw his panic. Ho Su didn't know how to say or what to do. Team 3's training session was over. They were given a 10-minute break. The whole team stepped aside and enjoyed the rest. There was only Ho Su. Everyone was wondering where Ho Su was. Won Ho assumed he went to the shower. Taking off his jacket, lowering his head, and leaning on the sink, Ho Su stood covered in sweat. He didn't know what to do. His ability to see the future was ruining him. Those times he just wanted to save a life. But things didn't go the way they were supposed to. Ho Su replayed one Ho's fall over and over again, trying to figure out how to avoid it. Training base. One of the professionals comes down the wall from above. He will be able to descend very deftly and quickly. The students standing below were surprised at his skill. In a matter of seconds, he managed to get down from the top. The captain said it was an example from a professional coach. Won Ho thought it was all a fun idea. And Ho Su on the contrary, he could not find a place for himself. The first team was the first to descend, or rather they were pushed to it. They put insurance on them. Training was going to start soon. At this time, the captain went to get instructions. The other members wished him to take care of himself. Won Ho was trying to find out what was going on with Ho Su. His behavior was the same as back on the bus. Sweat was running down his face. Ho Su justified this by saying that he was a little worried. While they were figuring out the reason for Ho Su's behavior, it was the turn of the team to do the training. Young Cho Han called everyone to go to training. Won Ho was enthusiastically ready to go. The guys from the other team were coming down in front of them. Various thoughts raced through their heads about what was scary, what was too high, and someone didn't care. They were carefully monitored. The rope will hold them and in case of an emergency, instructors will always be there to help. So there was nothing to be afraid of. Won Ho was about to come down. The instructor called Team 3 and suggested that someone go first. The chief went first. The team realized that he was a real leader. But Won Ho's zeal was stronger. He volunteered to go even ahead of the chief. The instructor did not stop him, nor did the chief. Therefore, he was simply ordered to go to the starting position. Then abruptly Ho Su stretched out his hand and began to pull Won Ho by the sleeve, lowering his head down. He told him that he began to feel bad, and asked for help to get him to the medical point. It was unexpected for Won Ho, but Ho Su said that he suddenly began to feel dizzy. Young Cho Han intervened in their dialogue and told the chief that Ho Su was ill and Won Ho should take him to the medical center. The chief was not at a loss and agreed with Cho Han. The commander was the first to go down. Won Ho and Ho Su slowly descended the stairs. Won Ho was scolding Ho Su for not saying he was sick earlier. Ho Su walked and tried to justify himself, thinking that he could endure the pain. Ho Su was calm, Won Ho was safe. Going down below and looking at the descent. The picture was terrifying. The captain was flying down, his cable broke. Won Ho and Ho Su stood in horror. It was all a vision. The vision ended, and everything returned to the moment when the chief went for instructions. Ho Su understood if it wasn't Won Ho who would fall, then someone else would. It was necessary to change the plan. He stood in thought. A lot of questions were spinning in his head. Everything went the same way, but this time Ho Su decided not to stop Won Ho. He was given insurance. One thing Ho Su didn't understand was why no one noticed the strange sound. Moment. Won Ho starts to descend, the cable breaks. Ho Su runs up to the edge and catches this cable. He held it with all his might. The pipe broke in two, the rope flew off. Horror and fear could be seen on the faces of the entire team and the instructor. Ho Su did not hesitate for a minute. He confidently held the rope so that Won Ho would not fall. Won Ho hung. Ho Su ordered him to brag harder. 
The latter followed his advice. All the guys standing at the top began to pull Won Ho back. Lifting Won Ho up, he sat on his knees, shock on his face. Won Ho and Ho Su's gazes crossed again. They clearly needed to explain something to each other. The training still had to be finished. They stopped handling the hoses. The instructor gave the go-ahead to complete the training and team number three decided to visit Won Ho. Walking down the corridor, everyone was interested in Won Ho's well-being, but team number three could not give an answer because they had not visited him yet. Everyone understood that everything could have ended very badly, and for a long time they thought about how this beam still broke. The captain assumed that they shared hallucinations or simple bad luck. Everyone thanked Ho Su for being able to be there. Everyone was just talking about how he could save a lot of human lives. When they reached the medical office, they opened the door and saw Won Ho, who was sitting on the bed. A local nurse was standing next to him. He didn't expect to see Ho Su, and then the whole team. Everyone was very worried about him, and hoped that he hadn't broken anything. The doctors gave him a recommendation to just lie down a little, everything was fine with him. Won Ho was interested in how their training went. They could not calmly study after this situation occurred. After that, they were sent to practice with a fire hose. It was total darkness. Everyone was hanging around Won Ho, except Ho Su. There was some awkwardness between them. Won Ho broke it, and decided to thank Ho Su for saving him. It wasn't a problem for Ho Su. The most important thing was that Won Ho was unharmed. Won Ho was confident when he went downhill, but perhaps because of him, such training will no longer be conducted. All the team members thought that he was going crazy or it was false optimism. Ho Su felt relieved, he hoped that he had done everything right. It's time to say goodbye. The team had to go eat, and Won Ho had to go to rest. Won Ho thanked everyone for the visit, but asked Ho Su to stay for a while. Won Ho had a serious conversation with Ho Su. Ho Su moored next to the bed. There was awkwardness between them. Ho Su tried to make it look like he didn't know why Won Ho asked him to stay. Won Ho didn't pull a word out of him, he decided to ask directly how Ho Su knew what was going to happen. Ho Su tried to hush up the subject, and began to say that he had no idea that the cable would break. But Won Ho interrupted him to begin with. He was interested in the situation that happened on the bus. He didn't understand how Ho Su managed to find out that Grandpa had a heart attack. Ho Su sat there and made excuses that he just had a good intuition. Won Ho hadn't thought about this strange combination of circumstances before, but as soon as Ho Su saw his grandfather, he realized that he was having a heart attack. Ho Su sat and sweated. Won Ho drew parallels. Ho Su behaved the same way today as he did that day. All the signs were the same. At first Ho Su was sweating, and then jumped up as if he knew what was going to happen. During the descent, Ho Su was the furthest from the descent, but in a matter of seconds he ran and grabbed the cable. Won Ho thanked Ho Su once again for saving him but then asked a question to which Ho Su could no longer withhold an answer how he could see what would happen in the future or know about it in advance. Then on the bus, and now, Won Ho needed an answer as to who Ho Su was. Ho Su had to explain to someone for the first time what was happening to him. Won Ho was confused. From a little shock, he hit Ho Su in the face. Ho Su clearly didn't expect this. Won Ho immediately apologized. Then he tried to test Ho Su's abilities by hiding his hand behind his back and asked him to guess the number of fingers he was showing. But that's not what Ho Su could see. It was going to be a long conversation. Ho Su confirmed Won Ho's suggestion that he can see the future. Won Ho froze in surprise. The thing is that Ho Su's feelings are heightened when he is nervous. Besides, it happened on my first day here, and during heavy training. Whenever Ho Su was nervous, he saw a glimpse of the future in his head. The more nervous he gets, the more he sees the future. Today, when it was announced that they would train in rope descent, Ho Su was very worried. And after that, Ho Su was able to see the future in which Won Ho had fallen. Won Ho didn't want to believe his words. Ho Su had to interrupt him a little. He made it clear that only a nut would lie about such a thing. A small complaint came to Won Ho. He himself wanted to know what was going on, but at the same time refused to tell the truth. Won Ho tried to assume that Ho Su saw that he could save him, but that was not the case. Ho Su only saw the fall. But somehow his plan worked. Won Ho started swearing at Ho Su, because if Ho Su couldn't save Won Ho, he could have been badly hurt himself. But Ho Su couldn't do otherwise. Won Ho put his hand on Ho Su's arm, called him a demon who can see the future, but next time he definitely asked to warn him if something goes wrong. And he will cope with everything together. An imperceptible smile appeared on Ho Su's face. Won Ho was also glad that there were no secrets between them. Five days later, firefighters who arrived on a mission were standing near a tall building. An order was received to start extinguishing, and after the question, is someone retarded alive? Yes, there were two survivors. True, no one knew their location. The door of the building was opened, fire was visible inside, or rather a fire vortex. A fire vortex is a phenomenon in which a fire that has consumed all available oxygen suddenly explodes when more oxygen appears. There was an explosion and it was possible to go inside. Team number three was on a mission. An instruction appeared from the captain. Ho Su and Won Ho had to split up and go in different directions, and he and Sung Woo would go straight. Ho Su found the first survivor, 
and then one ho found the second, he was in another room and had to clear the passage. Two survivors were successfully rescued and taken out into the fresh air. Ho Su radioed the rest of the team that he was coming back. The training was over. The number three team scored the maximum points 100 out of 100. The guys did a great job. The chief asked to take the dummies back for further training of other teams. Peng Gi volunteered to do it. With great joy, he ran up the stairs. But his leg turned up unsuccessfully, and he flew back. It was very good that Won Ho and Ho Su were standing behind. They asked him to be careful, and they helped him lift the dummies. Won Ho and Ho Su exchanged glances and winked at each other. Nothing much happened then, but the relationship between Won Ho and Ho Su began to change. It turns out that Peng Gi Ho Su saw the fall even before training, and told Won Ho about it, removing the mannequin they were smiling. The other guys also noticed that they had become very close. Time passed and no problems arose. The bell rang in the control room. Something happened in the Sinting area. The volunteers were gathered downstairs. No one understood what had happened. A fire truck drove up to the training ground, and the captain of the squad Kim Song-yi was sitting in it. He asked how many volunteers were present. The chief replied that there were two teams, each of six people. The captain began to choose volunteers from the crowd. First there was some girl, then one ho. He thought about the third one for a long time and finally pointed his finger at Ho Su. Ho Su didn't believe it. The girl's name was Kang Yi Rin. She was from team number two. She said a nice goodbye to her comrades. They wished her good luck and said goodbye. Won Ho and Ho Su stood in disbelief. Behind them, supportive words could be heard from their team. They were very proud of them. Ho Su and Won Ho were sitting in the car, already wearing gas masks. A man was sitting next to the captain and looking at them. Kang Yi Rin showed that she needed to take off her gas mask because this person wanted to talk to them. It was Fire Chief Lee Jin Ti. He wanted to explain to the guys why they were chosen. A fire broke out in the Sinting district. The county fire department has already taken action. They will act as an additional unit. Amateur activity was completely prohibited. They were just supposed to help the team as soon as they arrived at the place. And most importantly, everyone had to be very careful. All the guys answered as one that they understood everything. Lee Jin Ti assumed that everyone was excited. However, firefighting is associated with certain risks. Ho Su crossed his hands and beads of sweat appeared on his face. It was a very risky business. He hoped that nothing bad would happen. He begged. Noticing this, Won Ho tensed up. He was trying to figure out what Ho Su had seen. A short silence. Ho Su told him that there would be an explosion. Big. Won Ho didn't understand what was going on. The fire truck was traveling at the speed of light. Finally, they arrived at their destination. All the people were asked to move away to make room for the car. The fire was very large. The newcomers received an order to go quickly and help the rest of the firefighters, and most importantly, act without nonsense. Kang Yu Rin answered for everyone that they understood. The guys got out of the car. A large number of firefighters have already extinguished the fire. One thing was spinning in my head, when there would be an explosion and what would happen. Won Ho, putting on his helmet, told Ho Su to keep him informed of all events, and in case of anything, called for help. The guys put on oxygen tanks, connected hoses and started extinguishing the fire. At this time, the captain was trying to find out if there were any victims at the facility. Ho Su knew for sure. There were none. According to Ho Su, the building was made of high-quality materials, so the fire should not have spread further. But beads of sweat continued to form on his face. Something was wrong. It wasn't about the materials. And it wasn't about the building itself. The vision was that construction work was underway in a nearby building. And one of the workers was painting the walls. The paint is explosive. The picture in Ho Su's head formed. He knew what was going to happen. He turned his head around. There was an explosion in the vision. Huge. But it will happen in another building. Team 1 received an order to enter the building. But without haste, there was no need for it. Won Ho was standing and looking. Suddenly someone touched him on the shoulder from behind. It was Kang Ye Rin. She said that their assignments for today are over, so they need to stand by the car. Won Ho did not contradict. They went to the car. Kang Ye Rin was fascinated by the firefighting process. Finally, they introduced themselves to each other and could address each other normally. Kang Ye Rin asked about another rookie from his team. And then Won Ho remembered Ho Su's words from the car about the explosion. He didn't see Ho Su around. Won Ho began to panic. Kang Yi Rin noticed this and asked about Won Ho's well-being. Everything was fine. All I had to do was find Ho Su. He went to search and told Kang Yi Rin that he would be back soon. Kang Yi Rin stood in disbelief. She didn't understand anything. A small alley. SG25 store. The young girl greeted the customer without looking at him. Looking up, she saw a guy in a fireman's uniform all out of breath. She asked him what he needed. It was Ho Su. He needed to find the nearest construction site. The girl, a little scared, kindly explained something to the building right then that in front of them. There's a construction site there. The only one in the neighborhood. Ho Su thanked her and ran away. Won Ho and Kang Yi Rin tried to find Ho Su, he was nowhere to be found. Kang Yi Rin complained. She said that she had to stop everything and get back in the car, or they would have serious problems. Room 3 was called better. But in fact one is lost, the other is looking for him. 
Wan Ho's patience ran out. And he shook Kang Yi Rin that there would be an explosion, very big, and Ho Su was again trying to solve everything alone. Kang Yi Rin thought Wan Ho was a fool, because the firefighters calculated everything and put out the fire. She said they needed to stop wasting time. At that moment, it seemed to dawn on Wan Ho. He realized that the fire would happen in another rear. Then that saleswoman came out of the SG-25 and saw the fire with her own eyes and told me that there was a firefighter here recently. Wan Ho realized that it was Ho Su. He asked him to tell him immediately what he was asking. The girl replied that he was looking for a construction site. Wan Ho and Kang Yi Rin found this construction site. Wan Ho shouted and called Ho Su. Kang Yi Rin still thought they were fools. But later, Kang Yi Rin began to understand a little. The wind was quite strong and smoldering particles flew here. It would take a little time. Suddenly, a sound was heard from the building. Wan Ho immediately ran, hoping it was Ho Su. They found the basement window. Opening it slightly, they saw that Ho Su was sitting on the floor with a man in his arms. He was wearing his gas mask. They were very happy to see each other, but it was very hard because of the paint. There was no ventilation in the building. Ho Su was going to put a mask on the man first and pull him out, but he didn't have the strength. Kang Yi Rin didn't understand what kind of place this was. Wan Ho was about to go down. A picture finally formed in Kang Yi Rin's head. Paint, ash and gas. Beads of sweat stood out on her face. She remembered the explosion. Wan Ho was ready to go down, but replaying the whole situation in his head, Kang Yi Rin did not let him do it. Liquid paint. Ash. Gas. Isolation. It was impossible to go down. The ashes flew more and more towards the building. There was little oxygen inside, so the ash was fading. If Wan Ho comes in thoughtlessly, then a fire will start. Wan Ho desperately tried to save Ho Su. Kang Yi Rin had an idea. To begin with, she asked if Ho Su could move. He nodded. Then she asked to catch him, her oxygen tank. Ho Su barely got to his feet. His body was touching from side to side. Everything was spinning around. The balloon was very heavy. Kang Yi Rin warned him about it. The oxygen tank flew down. It bounced off the stairs a little, so it changed its trajectory just a little bit more and that's it. Ho Su managed to catch him in time. Kang Yi Rin gave an instruction. To begin with, it was necessary to put on an oxygen mask and slowly turn on the valve to make sure that the cylinder was not leaking. Everything was fine. Oxygen began to flow. To prevent the ash from getting inside, he decided to close the window and communicate by radio. There was not much left before extinguishing the fire. The Sinteng Fire Brigade was impressive. At that moment, Li Jin Ti decided to check out the newcomers. He was sure that they were standing and violently discussing the experience they had managed to get. When he opened the car door, he didn't see anyone. He couldn't believe his eyes. There wasn't even a guess in his head where they might be. Enraged, Li Jin Ti began calling Song Yi. He reported that the newcomers had left. But Song Yi wasn't surprised, he knew about it. They received a message on the radio that they were in the building with the victim. After finding out his health, they immediately went to them. Song Yi was a little disappointed, as he seemed to like them initially. Ho Su has already begun to see everything much clearer. He's finally feeling better. But this guy who was saved by Ho Su was in a bad condition. He had to be rushed to the hospital. Kang Yi Rin reassured Ho Su and said they would try to find another way. But at the same moment, the captain's voice was heard on the radio. He demanded to report their location. The captain asked in a good way. Kang Yi Rin told about all the events. The artist was hit by an explosion near the fire. Ho Su tried to save him. They're wearing masks right now. They managed to isolate this place so that the fire would not spread even more. The elders ran with all their might. They were worried that something might happen to them. The captain was pleased with them. They managed to successfully evacuate. Li Jin Ti will probably get into such scrapes very often. Song Ye reassured him, saying that this was his fate. They were already recently. A moment later, the commanders in chief stood next to Kang Yi Rin and Wan Ho. Li Jin Ti started to get scared and said that if they were going to chat with each other endlessly, then it was worth switching the radio channel. They were glad that everyone was safe. Wan Ho once again told me what happened. Kang Yi Rin suggested the idea to wait until all the beautiful ones dry up and then pull them out. Because if the windows are open now, the ash can get inside, and then an explosion is possible. Li Jin Ti had a plan. He asked everyone to step aside, and Song Yi to call an ambulance and leave his oxygen plan. Li Jin Ti started to start the plan. He opened the basement window a little and started going down there. He ordered to do only everything according to his instructions. Wan Ho closed the window. Li Jin Ti went down with the cylinders holding his breath. He went down, put an oxygen tank on the floor and began to open it. The gas began to come out of the cylinder. One balloon ran out. He took the second one and ordered to open the window quickly, which the guys did. After he reduced the gas pressure, he directed it at the ash. This was the decision. Then Li Jin Ti ordered Ho Su to remove the mask and quickly evacuate the artist while there is time. Ho Su didn't understand how in such a short time he could figure it out so quickly. The ambulance has arrived. Li Jin Ti picked up the victim and quickly carried him to the ambulance. 
he ordered to go to the nearest hospital and contact the district center. The ambulance left. Li Jin Ti stared sternly at the newcomers. They stood with their heads down. Today they passed the test, moreover, they spread rumors on the radio. Kang Ya Rin suggested that Li Jin Ti might be suspended, but he beat her to it. The guys thought they had saved the rider, but Li Jin Ti dashed their hopes to dust. They just ran into the building without any hesitation, and even got stuck inside. That's not what firefighters do. If firefighters relied only on desire, then what would happen to them? They would have simply died. Fortunately, they managed to put out the fire today. But if the situation had been a little more serious, it's not a fact that everything would have worked out. It is impossible to weaken the protection and run headlong to save a person. Therefore, your life will also be at risk, then you will have to save both of them. The first victim, the second rescuer. We need to learn from today's experience. And be focused, and even more careful. Li Jin Ti calmed them down a little, saying that they would not be punished much since they at least managed to find the victim. And they are very grateful to them for that. The guy stood rooted to the spot. Li Jin Ti ordered to get back into the car. As one, everyone obeyed and went to the car. Sitting there, Hosu apologized to everyone because it all happened because of him. But no one held a grudge against him. Kang Ye Rin was a little depressed because they couldn't do anything to save the victim. Wan Ho was more depressed because compared to the other me, he felt that he had failed to do anything. At the same moment, Wan Ho jumped up and shouted that he wanted to be cool, just like Ho Su. Kang Ye Rin was still annoyed by them anyway. She interrupted their question about how they knew this would happen. Ho Su and Wan Ho turned on the fools and didn't understand what they were talking about. They had to come up with something. The firefighters were already on their way back. The captain praised everyone for their good work. Li Jin Ti got into the car and exhaled. Looking back, he saw that the guys were upset. He was trying to make a joke and somehow bring them to a positive. They started the car and drove home. Li Jin Ti reminded that they will not be severely punished, so there was nothing to worry about. They all answered as one, but only there was no joy in the voice. They took the situation too much to heart. The newcomers were not as noisy as expected. They wanted to start announcing something on the speakerphone. Won Ho and Ho Su quickly got up from the bed. Someone was singing on the speakerphone. The guys got out of bed and started to get dressed. The others woke up at that time, they explained that they had to go to the instructor since they actually left the scene of the fire. Everyone was in shock. For all the guys, it seemed like something scary, but not for Won Ho and Ho Su. Kang Yi Rin was already waiting at the door, and everyone was more shocked by this. What was team member number two doing here? She was hurrying them. The captain did not quite understand what had happened, but clearly something was not the best. The guys did not deny it. They walked down the corridor and were silent until Kang Yi Rin exploded and began to clarify that yesterday she found out that Ho Su could see the future. The guys then hesitated very much, as in the last one, and did not really answer anything. Kang Yi Rin thought about it a lot, but still didn't understand. Their explanation made no sense. She didn't know whether to believe them. It was the first day of punishment. Won Ho was sweating profusely. It was very hot. He was falling to his knees and didn't want to go any further. Kang Yi Rin called them smudges. It was getting harder to run, especially over the hills. But there was nothing to be done about it. They said the field was being used for something else. Won Ho was the burden of this training. Kang Yi Rin told him to get up, or else they would increase the distance. I had to hurry so that I wouldn't be forced to run even more. These two barely moved. It was a real punishment for Kang Yi Rin. The fifth day of punishment. Ho Su and Kang Yi Rin were serious. They wanted to stop the punishment already. The laggard in the top three was Won Ho. He asked to take a break. Everyone is tired. Kang Yi Rin motivated her heartbeat when she ran, she felt alive. Ho Su agreed with her words, although he periodically flew somewhere in the clouds. Kang Yi Rin called Ho Su strange. With such strong training, he didn't even break a sweat. Kang Yi Rin teased Ho Su about whether he had any other ability besides seeing the future. Won Ho and Ho Su quickly put their fingers to their mouths and showed Kang Yi Rin that they needed to be quieter with these words. To spite them, Kang Yi Rin started yelling at the top of her voice, so that others heard. Won Ho and Ho Su quickly covered her mouth with their hands. The others noticed that they managed to make friends very well. Everyone is tired. While the guys were sharing their impressions, it turned out that Ho Su was practicing long distance running for the test. Or rather, I just controlled the speed a little. Kang Yi Rin and Won Ho exchanged glances and quickly ran away from Ho Su, or rather from the monster, as Kang Yi Rin called him. It turns out that Ho Su has his own training method. It's so commonplace for him that he didn't even try to explain. The guys returned from training earlier than usual. Peng Yi took the helmet from Ho Su and put it back in its place. It was a difficult punishment, but not for Ho Su, he didn't even break a sweat on the last lap. Everyone called him a record holder. Ho Su himself quickly changed the subject, trying to find out where the boss was. He was immediately told that he had already gone to pack his things, as the weekend was coming soon. The week passed very quickly. The guys started discussing what they would do on the weekend. Song Wu received an offer to go shopping. Peng Yi wouldn't mind going too. Then it came to Ho Su's plans. His plans were the most ordinary, just to study. Everyone was shocked by this. The idea of studying no longer seemed strange. 
all the guys agreed and decided that they would train. After that incident, Hosu kept thinking that if he had been more careful, a little bit more resilient, then he wouldn't have had to be rescued. Hosu thought he was too relaxed, like the first time in training. In a very difficult training session, even under such pressure, he will be able to see and find the best speed. All the guys went to the distance. Hosu was the first to run the distance. He was given a time of 3 minutes 48 seconds. Everyone was in shock. One Ho thought it was almost a national record. It was more than good. Hosu was cool. Sun Wu Hyun believed that with such a record, anything would be possible. However, he could not stay away. He was also forced to train. All this was watched from afar by the main bosses. They were wondering who could study on the weekend. It was team number three. They were proud. Lee Jin Ti said that they were brave, apart from the problems that were. If they are learned correctly, they will be capable of feats. The boss has not seen Lee Jin Ti praise someone for a long time. Oh Hai and Song came to the set. He was free today, so he decided to visit, and in the evening they decided to have dinner. The number three team was fooling around on the field. Peng Gi tried to beat Ho Su's record, but he failed a little. Oh Hai and Song approached the guys and wanted to recharge their youthful energy. The guys did not understand who he was. They believed that a simple passerby appeared out of nowhere and offered a race. Team number three decided to field their best player Hosu. From Ohai and Sun came an offer not only to run, but also to try to do exercises, pull up, for example. Hosu was a little shocked. Competition with an active officer. One minute was clocked. Hosu was determined to show everything he was capable of. The team supported their comrade very much. Hosu believed in himself very much. At that moment, something should have happened to the opponent's speed, but Ohayan Sun pulled himself up without much difficulty. It was easy for him. Time is up. For Ohayan Sun, it was just a warm up, and Hosu is pretty exhausted. They did not measure the number. Hosu clearly lost. Ohayan Song took off his jacket and asked what they would do next. He clearly exhausted team number three. They returned to the room exhausted and a little upset. The rescue team is full of psychos. One Ho told Hosu that he was holding up very well. Hosu was angry. He thought his training was enough but it turned out not to be. Hosu offered to continue studying to become even better. The whole team supported his idea. You can't give up after losing. They are special training room number three. Wanho couldn't wait to lose to Hosu. Kang Yi Rin came by in the corridor. She heard the cheers of team number three. For her, they were still somehow strange. There are days when you're just scared. You can't sleep. And a lot of thoughts are rushing through your head, even when you're trying to forget. Nothing comes out. It was now that Hosu had such days. Hosu entered the office. He wanted to get a consultation from Lee Jin Ti. He managed to set the time at 16 o'clock, but it turned out to meet earlier. It was the last day of the punishment. Ho Su was in a bad mood, then Lee Jin Ti offered him a cup of coffee. Ho Su was an ace. While Lee Jin Ti was having coffee, he told Ho Su that he could tell anything. Ho Su lowered his head down and began to tell. In general, since childhood he dreamed of becoming a firefighter. Lee Jin Ti was cheering him on. He had good physical fitness and was able to navigate well. It was more than a dream, more like a talent. All the recent events were spinning in Hosu's head. Yes, he managed to find a person ahead, but he could not do anything. Yes, he is strong, but he does not go on equal terms with an active officer. Li Jin Ti stared at him with bulging eyes. Hai and Sun has created a little trouble again. Li Jin Ti explained that this guy is a special case. You just need to be on fires more often. Experience will decide everything else. Hosu believed that he was different from the others, and this job was his vocation. Li Jin Ti agreed with his words. Hosu was special, just like everyone else in his own way. But it is very dangerous to think that you are the only one who is the most special and the best. Ho Su's face changed. He no longer considered himself special. He lost confidence in himself, and Li Jin Ti quickly admitted it. He didn't expect it to be so easy. His coming here was about something else. Ho Su said that when the fire occurred, he did not know whether to cope with the task. Surprisingly, Li Jin Ti said that he is also never sure of success. Ho Su didn't expect such words. That day, Li Jin Ti was scared to death. You never know if the air will ignite. He was afraid that when he entered, oxygen gotten with him. His legs were shaking until Hosu sent the victim to the hospital. Even remembering this case now, he doesn't like it. He was still the same ordinary. Fires are terrible. But there's nothing you can do about it, if he doesn't save, then who? Hosu didn't understand how he could leave so calmly for calls. But there are really times when Lee Jin Ti was special. The door opened and a man entered the office. He began to bow in front of Hosu and thank him. He came with a gift. It was not a fan, but the person who was saved. He wanted to thank him earlier but the discharge was postponed. The rescued man bowed before Hosu. Hosu stood amazed. Lee Jin Ti said that he has become special now. He asked Hosu to call Wan Ho and Kang Yu Rin so that the person could thank them too. Hosu came out of the office and started calling the guys. It's time to become Hosu special. Professional test. Everyone in the team was worried about this test. Everyone except Hosu, he had no idea what it was. It was necessary to perform all sorts of tasks in an oxygen mask and 27 kilogram equipment. 
In all this it was necessary to pass obstacles. Pengi suggested that it was like running with 32 kilogram kettlebells. Climbing stairs. One Ho said that Ho Su would be able to find these workouts on the internet. It was only necessary to write professional physical test of a firefighter. The whole team was buried in Ho Su's phone. Their eyes were wide. Exactly the main test of the fire academy. You put on all the gear, go through the obstacle course. This allows you to feel the limits of the human body. A hellish ordeal. Begins. The teams came to the field. The chief ordered everyone to approach their teams. Everyone has heard of a professional physical test at least once. Before they were going to start, the chief had to tell the rules. The first was not to give up. He turned to the guys and found out if there was one among them who would leave the victim because he was tired. All well answered that there are no such. The second rule is to train as best as possible to feel your limits. Because in a real situation, anything can happen. There is a possibility that they may lose a comrade. In order to know different ways and methods to successfully complete missions, you all need to know your limits. Everyone was in complete agreement with the words of the chief. During training, they were told beautiful words that don't kill me makes me stronger. The chief asked me to take this seriously. Now all the teams have gone to their commanders. It was very tense. The whole team hoped that Ho Su's training could bear fruit. Everyone was hoping for good results. There were also time tasks in the training sessions. The last five participants will stay and perform it again. The point was that you run with a hose to point and take it away. And at point B you drag weights and install a ladder. At point C you move the wounded. At point D you run to the roof and ring the bell. It is difficult. The guy's brains were boiling. The instructor should show them how to do the task. Ho Su thought that if this task is for a while, then a record will be set. Everyone assumed that Ho Su would be able to set a new record. For Ho Su, it seemed like something fun. But no, this competition was with myself. Before they started, they invited someone who would show them how to complete the task. On the urgent recommendation of Lee Jin T, they invited his close friend, who works as a commander in the Sagban rescue team. Everyone greeted Yoon Hai and Sun. It was an honor for him to be a model. Everyone admired his beauty. A professional physical test is as complicated as a real operation. As someone who works in this field, he thought he was invited to suffer. He smiled. He said that he would give his best to meet the expectations of the guys. Ho Su realized that it was with him recently that he pulled up on the horizontal bars. Ho Su decided it was a competition. Yoon Hai and Sung took a stand. The training has begun. Running at high speed. Removing the hose took 27 seconds. Running with weights, he ran very fast, despite the fact that they were very heavy. This is a completely different level. A successful rescue in three minutes. What could be better? The entrance to the dark tunnel. He spent only five minutes there. He was very fast. A moment later, he was already running to the training tower. Pulls out the rope on the fourth floor. He goes up to the roof and rings the bell. Finished. The record was 6 minutes 48 seconds. It was great. He beat off all the excitement of the newcomers. Ho Su was thinking about one thing. Whether someone would be able to break his record. It should have been a lot easier. But Yoon Hai and Sung gave it his all. It was time for Ho Su to concentrate. If he gathered himself, he would be able to do everything. What doesn't kill makes you stronger. No matter how fast he ran, he would still be fine. Ho Su's turn. He ran like a bullet. In 26 seconds he managed to pull out the hose. Taking the weights in his hands, he did not expect them to be so heavy. But he had to go. Geary denounced. It took him 1 minute and 24 seconds. The training of professional exercises begins. He was running out of oxygen. He needed a lot more. Sweat was dripping from his face. Here he was already carrying the victim. There was not much left. He began to feel sick. He needed air. I didn't hear the injured Ho Su became very ill. No one understood what was going on. Ho Su began to take off his helmet, followed by his mask. The instructor started swearing at him very strongly, because in real circumstances this cannot be allowed. He needed to breathe more slowly, as a certain amount of oxygen was coming out of the balloon. He did not listen to anyone, and took off his mask and fell to the ground. It was all a vision. One Ho asked if everything was fine with Ho Su, he said yes. The guys went to watch the other teams. Ho Su kept telling himself to breathe slower all the time. Almost everyone ran the distance in 9 minutes. The boss didn't like it. Running fast doesn't mean good. Everyone had to concentrate. No one wanted anyone to get sick. Lee Jin Ti really wanted someone to start the test correctly. It's the next one's turn. Kang Yi Rin was standing at the start. She was determined. Everyone expected high results from her. Yoon Hai and Sun liked a lot of students. There were many who were worthy of praise. Kang Yi Rin was the most humble. She was a national athlete who had passed a special program. A female firefighter. Her determination is different from the rest. Kang Yi Rin was fast and agile. Her result was 7 minutes 24 seconds. After taking off her helmet, she was all wet. Ho Su and Won Ho supported Kang Yi Rin like real friends. With each subsequent participant, the result improved. The team started to get into their own pace. It was Ho Su's turn. The chief had a conversation with Yoon Hai and Sung. They were discussing Ho Su. Yoon Hai and Sung said that he didn't manage to give his best the day he checked him out. Ho Su motivated himself. 
everything should have worked out for him. The main thing was to be careful with his right leg on the 48th breath and not worry about muscle pain. You need to be more careful with your head when winding the hose. When darkening, go to the right at 28 seconds. If he has any problems, he will just change the plan. Attention, march, Ho Su ran. In any case, he will have time to think along the way. At the beginning of the race, he almost fell. He was told that initially he needed to pull out the hose. Ho Su was pulling out the hose so fast that he almost hit himself. Everyone was worried, but Ho Su knew everything in advance. He passed the test so quickly that everyone couldn't keep up with him. Standing guys began to shout his name. The chefs were taken aback by the speed. He had not been so fast before. There was not even six seconds in time yet. Now he has already moved the victim. His concentration was stronger than his anxiety. He didn't see the future during the trial. Because of one vivid scene that he remembered. The test is over. He was grateful to the words that guided him on this path. At that moment, he remembered his childhood, the fire in the kindergarten. Thanks to the fact that he knew which window the firefighters would be in, they managed to save them. He was then told that he should be ahead. The ringing of the bell. Trainee Hosu from team number 3 passed the test in 5 minutes and 58 seconds. It was something. Everyone was cheering downstairs. The result of the professional physical test was stunning. Hosu was sweating profusely. Yoon Hyun Song got up from the bench and could not believe his ears. 5 minutes and 58 seconds. This is a record that will remain for a long time. Kang Yi Rin didn't understand how his body could withstand such pressure. Next up is Won Ho. He looked very relaxed. He had to try very hard. The entire number 3 team was ready to repeat Hosu's success. But everyone completed the training with less success, about 8 minutes. At the start, Won Ho was waiting in line. He understood that he didn't have special abilities like Ho Su and didn't train as much as Kang Yi Rin. But who cares? The sound of a gun, the test has begun. He believed that he was the same firefighter. When pulling out the hose, he got into a good position. This was noted by the elders. Everything was real, the main thing was not to stop. The sound of the bell. Won Ho overcame the training in 7 minutes and 21 seconds. The test is over. Team number 3 returned to the room. Everyone was very tired, the body ached. The guys were happy for Ho Su that he managed to wipe Yoon Hai and Sun's nose. In two weeks they were to have a graduation. They promised themselves to work hard until the end. Unlike the difficult times, or the time when they studied so much that it seemed like an eternity. From the moment they met, time flew by unnoticed. And that very day came. 71 graduates of interns. Their graduation. Sun Wu Hai was standing near the mirror in his shirt, and trying on a cap. He was reminded very timely to put on his pants. It was their graduation day. He was a little doubtful of himself whether he would succeed. Ho Su's eyes were swollen. Won Ho asked if he had been crying. Ho Su was very worried last night. He was drinking with friends until everyone went home. Sun Wu Hyun put on sweatpants instead of trousers. The whole team burst out laughing. The captain said that Team 3 will now break up. And tears began to drip from his eyes. He thanked everyone for taking care of him. Pengi also started crying. It was sad to part. The captain suggested to stop crying and go to the ceremony. Team 3 walked down the corridor to the hall. The ceremony will begin any minute now. The interns were asked to take their seats. Ho Su was very nervous. He still saw a useless future. Won Ho calmed him down and told him to just enjoy the ceremony. The lights went out in the hall. The project had a video with the best moments of their training. They filmed their training sessions. The guys laughed and cried together. They also told about the new record in training. The owner of which was Ho Su. Indeed, it was the end. For someone it was a long time, for someone on the contrary. Ho Su was confused. He didn't want to forget those feelings. At the end of the video, the credits rolled and everyone was asked why they wanted to become firefighters. Beak Seo Chan was confident that he could do what others couldn't. Kang Byung Hoon just liked the orange uniform. Young Hai and Min just wanted to protect the family. Lee Hai Sung just wanted to save valuable lives. Lee Soon Won chose this profession because it is from God. For Kim Min Young, the profession was combined with duty. Nam Ti Ho to protect people's lives. It was a great job. Everyone stood up and clapped to themselves. Everyone was great. Then the guys began to be awarded with diplomas, and the most senior captain finished the ceremony. He hoped that everything would only get better from now on. The guys saluted, and the ceremony ended. Ho Su has officially become a firefighter. Favorite cafe. Ho Su was already sitting and drinking coffee. Kang Ye Rin came into the cafe. She was surprised that he had come ahead. She asked why he was alone, without Won Ho. He explained to her that Won Ho was looking for a new place to stay. He's going to have a hard time. The ceremony was to take place tomorrow. Ho Su thought it was difficult to become a firefighter, training, graduation, ceremony. It was supposed to be held at the official office. It's just a ceremony. And then once in they're already official firefighters. Kang Yi Rin lowered Ho Su to the ground. He's not the only one who knows about it. The idea of the meeting was Kang Yi Rin. She needed to gather her thoughts. She used to live with a teammate. Now she will be alone. She wanted to see them again until she misses them again. She asked Ho Su to see her. Ho Su began to blush and feel embarrassed. 
Tang Yirin stopped him, it wasn't something he could think of. She asked which fire station he was invited to, and if they are close, then they could see each other often. Ho Su was in a stupor, he thought he had told Kang Yirin where he was assigned. He was invited to the Jack Du station, nearly one street. Kang Yirin shuddered. She was called there too. To team one, Jen Ban. Jen Ban, these are the ones who will spray the water. Ho Su was in team number two. He thanked God that he was chosen there. Kang Yirin didn't understand why he was so happy. They would only be able to see each other during shift hours. Ho Su was a little worried. She ordered him to keep his ability a secret. She hadn't thought about it when they were at the academy. But things would be different with the fire station. The main thing is to remember the consequences. There aren't many people in the world you can trust. If Ho Su is sloppy and blurts out, he will simply be considered crazy. First you need to think and then do. If a vision appeared, he had to try his best. And it was necessary to make sure that there were no problems. And it was always necessary to have a plan, not to act without it. Ho Su thanked Kang Yirin, she got up and left. It was time for her. She wanted to go shopping. She felt safer because she knew she would be able to see him more often. The day after the ceremony, Pengi hugged everyone very tightly. The captain took a photo for memory. Won Ho and Ho Su cried and hugged each other goodbye. They had to break up. Won Ho was invited to the Chin Wan fire station. John Han Hyun was called to Jiangsu. His neck has been hurting lately. The commander and Sun Wu Hyun were invited to the central fire station. Pang Gi Hyun received an invitation from Jin Wai station. He was sad, but everyone had to go their own way. The leader was ready to pay them for all the food. Everyone became firefighters. So Ho Su came to his place of work, where he was invited. The phone rang in the firehouse. It was the Chagdu Rescue Service. Firefighter Yung Hiti answered the phone. The caller wanted the fire department to post a report on the results of the accident prevention training. One of the employees already thought that an inspection was going to arrive. He was scared. The next call was received by another employee. It was Fireman Beek Young Tan. He answered everything with agreement, with a serious look. Everyone started to worry. But Beek Young Tang said it wasn't worth it. Even if it turns out to be true, they could do it, nothing complicated. However, this case was not the only thing they were doing. They had a lot of other things to do. Young Hiti agreed with this. There's also a report hanging around. Ho Su sat next to the table and watched. He tried to get up to speed. Young Hee Ti finished his morning work, so he was ready to help Ho Su. The habits from the academy have not gone away yet. When Ho Su was asked something, he quickly jumped up and answered very formally. He was dreaming for a while. Shin Young Bom was the commander of the second squad, a firefighter. He said that this is not a distribution of graduates, but in any case he can be transferred. He wanted Ho Su to feel comfortable. Shin Jun Bom was very fond of joking. Young Hee Ti introduced himself next. The drawings meant ranks. It was impossible to name the rank of Young Hee Ti exactly. But the more stars, the higher the rank. Probably equivalent to our lieutenant or captain. Ho Su introduced himself and said that he could just be called a foreman. Bi Kyung Tan was the boss. Young Hee Ti invited Ho Su to come out to explain everything to him and show him the cars. Ho Su didn't resist. Only he began to get very nervous. Just like at the moment when he sees the future. People who work the night shift sleep in the room next to the office. The other door was the garage. Ho Su liked the cars. There was a starting station. Young Hee Ti decided to explain more about her. When they move, the leader will go on a water carrier. Ah Ho Su, Young Hee Ti and the boss at the pumping station. Now the chief Jong Tan is driving. Someday, Ho Su will be able to sit down at that place. The head of the back was strict, so you had to try your best. He was a very respected man. If Ho Su follows him, then he will never have any problems. Another ambulance arrived at the garage. The guy who got out from behind the wheel asked Ho Su. Young Hee Ti said Hai An had done a good job. Park Yong Jun is a paramedic, a firefighter. He was an ambulance driver, Yong Jun Hyunim. Ho Su was nice to meet you. Then another guy got out of the car, he was the face of their center. It was a paramedic, a firefighter, Kim Yong Jin. He was glad to meet you. Together with Ho Su, there were six people in the department. The guys left, and Young Hee Ti continued the tour. Ho Su could leave his things behind the car. There were names pasted on so as not to get confused. He was glad to see the sticker with Kang Yu Rin's name on it. But in an instant, something went wrong. Chuck Du Fire Department. Mobilization. Chuck Du Fire Station. Emergency call intersection 0, building 0. There was an accident. The driver got stuck in the car. As soon as the guys arrived, a new challenge was waiting for them. Young Hee Ti wished good luck. Ho Su paid attention to their speed. They were very fast. In the afternoon, immediately after the call, it was necessary not to forget to close the roll gates. There was nothing complicated about it. There are two buttons. One releases the gate, the other raises them. It was just so Young Hee Ti didn't explain more. Ho Su understood everything. Paramedics receive calls very often, so this should not be surprising. If Ho Su listens carefully, he will notice that the sound of the call for paramedics and the fire and rescue team is different. Young Hee Ti promised that Ho Su would get used to it soon. He promised that soon he would be able to understand the details very well. 
Ho Su asked him to wait a little while so that he could run to get a notebook to write down. He T it was reminiscent of the old days. The boss was standing in the hallway. Young He T asked if he was interested in the success of the newcomer. But in response he said that his work would directly depend on how hard he trains. Young He T thought Ho Su was a good guy. Ho Su came running out of breath with a pen and a notebook. Ho Su was ready to record. To begin with, Young He T recommended writing down the words they use most often. There were words like current location. They moved on to the next stage. The guys began to learn more about each other. And everyone was surprised that Ho Su is only 24 years old. Shin Jun Bomb called him the real Macni. Macni is the youngest person in the team. Mr. Young joked that he would soon turn 73. Young He T tried to play along with him. But another employee disrupted their entire prank. Ho Su was glad. Everyone in the firehouse looked like good people. He shouldn't have worried. He could relax. Young He T said that Ho Su can ask about anything. Ho Su asked about the mobilization. Young He T replied that, depending on which unit he was talking about, he was not sure how many firefighters he was calling. They can't know for sure when something will happen. Ho Su wanted to feel what it was like to mobilize and go on a call. Then the boss came into the conversation. He misunderstood the words. He thought Ho Su wanted a fire to happen. Ho Su began to apologize. Young He T came to his defense. There is also something special about waiting. The waiting area is also the current location. Ho Su knew they had to wait for an opportunity. However, there was no tension felt here. But he, Ho Su went to the garage to think. He was a little worried. At the fire school, every training session seemed like a battle for survival. Of course, wanting an accident to happen is wrong. However, if this is the life of a firefighter, his thoughts were broken by the ambulance that arrived from the call. Kim Yong Jin asked for Ho Su's help to clean up the car. There was a big mess. He did not refuse. Opening the trunk there was all splattered with blood. There was nothing to be surprised about. The patient was badly injured. Before a new challenge, it was necessary to get out. Ho's reaction was a little different. The car was too clean for him. So clean that it's like nothing happened here. At all. He shot everything around. The waiting area is also the current location. Thoughts were spinning in my head. As if nothing had happened. Because they were always ready to go on a call. There should be no tension. Ho Su didn't understand this. He's just a beginner. That moment will come soon. Very soon. The fire department was traveling in an ambulance and asked to clear the road. Young He Ti was comforting Ho Su. He said that you just need to do what the boss says. If an unforeseen situation arises, then you just need to focus. Ho Su put on his helmet and nodded his head. Arriving at the call, they were met by people and apologized for a very long time. The weather was great, so they decided to have a barbecue outside. Apparently someone saw the smoke and called 911. Young Hiti did not scold them, but on the contrary was happy that everything was fine. The challenge was not serious, so Young Hiti offered to go and eat meat. The smell of fried pork breast is just killer. At the same time, you can make a welcome party for Ho Su, because it's his first challenge and a little disappointment. Ho Su thought the main thing was that everything was fine. The boss was angry. He told Young Hiti and Ho Su to concentrate. A lot could happen before arriving at the base. Ho Su and Young Hiti apologized. The following challenges were also less successful. Then the elderly people decided to burn the garbage. Or the guy who managed to put everything out himself. The guys were a little upset and returned to the base. Back at the base. Young He Ti assumed that Ho Su's head was spinning on the first day. And it was really like that. Ho Su had to learn a lot. Although Young He Ti didn't understand what needed to be taught. Ho Su explained that while they were traveling. The elders told him a lot of things. He was glad. Because explanations helped him much better than textbooks and writing. One of the employees noticed that Ho Su gets along very well with people. The role of the boss would suit him very well. Young He Ti pushed back from the table, looked at the time, he turned to Ho Su. He said that there would be a shift change soon, so he could finish his business and go to rest or study the city. Nothing happened today. Ho Su was sweating all over, something had happened to him. The guys from the fire department suggested that he was just in a hurry because lunch was coming soon. But it was something else. On the first day, he needed to focus on work. The girl, looking at the time, realized that she was late. She was passing by the karaoke. There was a strange smell coming from there. Chapter 1 This story begins with a description of a man with an attractive appearance. He had dark hair and a pointed chin, and big round glasses hid his eyes. He made an assumption and, removing the accessory from his face, said aloud that the calm and quiet days were over. To his left was a girl who had long brown hair. She was wearing a blue jacket. The man turned to her and with a mysterious expression on his face and sparkling eyes said that fate. He continued his dialogue. The girl was mesmerized. She silently watched her interlocutor reflected in his dark blue eyes. The man explained that this is the price he paid for the chance to participate in this fight. Having finished his story, the character suddenly approached the lady and kissed her, gently supporting her chin with his fingers. The guy fell into thought, and, in order to avoid any misunderstandings, just in case, he decided to explain his actions to the readers. In his opinion, the main character was definitely not a playboy who kisses any girl he comes across. However, 
Everything changed exactly on the day when this lady came to him. The girl turned red in her face from embarrassment and ignorance of how to react correctly, and continued to look at her partner. The man continued his inner monologue. Now he was talking about how that day was quite ordinary and no different from the rest. It all happened during lunch. The guy made a mistake and corrected himself. Breakfast. Before the eyes of readers, a city filled with huge high-rise buildings of different colors appeared, beige, red, blue, gray. Based on his story, the main character lived in an ordinary average Korean family. Attention falls on a three-story house with a red roof. Someone exclaimed furiously, asking what his interlocutor had said a little earlier. A spoon fell on the table, and a bowl with the remains of white rice stood next to it. The main character pitifully asked his parents, sitting opposite him, if they would no longer pay for their son's education, starting this semester. His eyes bulged in surprise. On the right was a girl who, after looking at her brother, continued to eat her food. The head of the family, a bristly man with deep bags under his eyes, answered the question by saying that he had previously heard how children in other countries become independent when it comes time to go to college, adding on behalf of himself and his wife that they would allow him to eat and sleep in their house. At least the gentleman instructed his son to start earning and paying for his education. The guy was a little puzzled. His eyebrows curved in a zigzag shape, his eyes shrank, and his mouth opened. In a trembling voice, he turned to his father, giving an argument that he already earns money for himself, which goes to personal expenses and school fees. He was interested in the question of how the main character would be able to find free time to study if he had to find another part-time job. The head of the family ordered in an angry voice to make his voice quieter because earlier he had already said that the girl, his daughter, needed private lessons, but he did not have that much money. Veins bulged and muscles tensed on his face, his nose curled, and his eyebrows frowned. The man demanded to know what his son wanted from a simple hardware store owner. In his head, he imagined himself standing at the counter and punching through the goods, pretending to smile at the visitors. Ian, that was the name of the youngest daughter, took the chance to talk to her father and told him that she had only two lessons. And Mayan in. That is, her brother also needed to study if he would study. She raised two fingers of her left hand and smiled from ear to ear, without finishing her remark. The head of the family objected to her, explaining that since the main character is studying at a third-rate university, there will be no difference whether he will seriously study or not, because in any case dot the guy will be in a bad company as a temporary employee. His words hit his son so hard that he even pretended to fly away. The girl looked at him, saying that her father did not know who her brother would refuse in the future. However, the man brought several significant arguments that put everything in his favor. For example, Myungin played computer games too much and now he is not able to enter a good school, adding from himself that Ian is their only hope. A brilliant idea came to the man's head. He tried to make sure that his daughter's home teacher said that the girl has a great talent, thanks to which she will be able to enter Seoul National University. Now the head of the family has turned to his son, saying that their temporary employee, his mother and he are working tirelessly to maintain the store. This is the best they could do with their income. And taking into account Myungin's past, his school achievements and future prospects, the man saw no point in investing in him, adding that he would also reap the benefits of his sister's achievements. The guy raised his right hand in horror and bewilderment, as if asking the question why he should depend on her. The man told him that the main character should have studied more when he was told, so now he gets what he deserves. The head of the family asked him if he still plays games, comparing them to drug addiction. Meng Ying was about to object that computer games are not so bad, but his father interrupted him, silencing him, because he had no right to talk to him like that when he attends such a seedy school. The sounds came to the street from the upper floor. The man continued his malicious instructions, adding that his son needed a diploma so he would not tell him to quit games, but he would still stop paying for his education. Walking down the street, the main character was depressed from the morning beating, but the girl walked as if nothing had happened. She called Myung in an appa and asked for his forgiveness. His eyes took on a surprised look. And looking at his sister, he saw that she was really sorry. The heroine covered her mouth with a small and fragile hand, and her face turned red-pink with pity. The man's face changed. The reader could not see the expression of his eyes, because the glasses reflected the sun, but it was noticeable how a slight grin appeared. In his thoughts, he called her cute and beautiful, adding that she was the best in her academy by grades. The hero understood why her parents loved her so much. Patting his sister on the top of her head, Mayan Ying said that it wasn't her fault, but it was really cruel to him. The guy looked at his reflection in the glass. They were tall and slender, dressed in a white shirt and dark jeans with a gray backpack hanging on his back. Thinking about the fact that people speak of him as quiet because of the round big glasses, but his appearance was not remarkable, he was neither stupid nor smart. The guy continued to lead his thoughts. In his opinion, Myung Ying never caused significant problems for his parents, but he also didn't have any significant talents. In addition, the guy entered a school that everyone sees as third rate. But if so, then can't they show at least a little bit of love towards him? At this point, the main character lowered his head. After a moment, 
The character laughed and said that he just needed to work more now, smiling with all 32 teeth and resting both hands on his sides. The girl became nervous. He asked him in a loud voice to stop and offered to start a hunger strike as a protest or to close herself in her room and refuse to study. However, the guy was only upset by her words, repeating them, he refused her ideas. Nevertheless, the heroine turned out to be very persistent. This time Ian offered her brother to accept a bonus allowance for the fact that she scored a perfect score on the MOC. The girl held out a white envelope that was filled with band notes. Their radiance attracted Ma Young in. Joking off, the main character thanked his younger sister for her concern, but he was sure that he would cope, he would be fine. The guy raised his right hand, mentioning about the money, to which the girl looked questioningly. Suddenly, the picture shifts the reader's attention. A black passenger car appears before his eyes. The driver's door opened and a girl got out. The guys around rounded their eyes and began to watch the stranger with interest. The new heroine had long purple hair and square-shaped glasses. She was wearing a black skirt and a pink blouse. The lady closed the door and began to attract the attention of crowds of people fascinated by her appearance. The stranger bowed and greeted the president, indicating that at the moment it was 12.40. The man greeted, raising his left hand, and turned to Jai Yong, asked if it was time for breakfast. It turned out to be. Already known to readers, Ma Young Ying, who complained that it was quite difficult in the subway today because he could not find a free seat. He added that at least he now has more free time compared to high school, considering it cool, and smiled from ear to ear. Ja Yong asked the man's permission to give him a ride, if it would be convenient in this case, to which he replied in the affirmative, so that the girl would behave calmly. People who admired the beauty of the lady some time ago were perplexed by the current situation. The couple got into the car and moved out on the road. The remaining men opened their mouths and tried to recover. The girl and the man were having a dialogue with each other. Ja Yong asked Ma Yang in, apologizing in advance for his impertinence, why he would not tell his family about his wealth, probably then they would become more open. The main character agreed with her and explained that he had already thought about it. The heroine mentioned the president's sister, saying that if he thinks about her, then he probably worries once again. Ma Ying knew this perfectly well and not only, he worries more about his parents, because money can't always buy happiness. The reader was presented with a family photo in a broken frame and a lottery ticket. The girl asked if the man would like to have lunch first, or if he would prefer to do something else. Meng Ying, turning half around and waving his right hand in farewell, said that breakfast turned out to be quite unpleasant, so he asked the girl to cook dinner. He gave her an order not to hurry, because he would start working at the specified time. The man thought that the announcement of the broadcast, which was released today, had already been shown, at the same time asking Ja Yong about it. The girl confirmed his words by pressing the button on the 13th floor in the elevator, and added that it was said that the president would frequent there. They were in a giant building, probably the tallest in the city. The heroes have ascended to the secret divine level. Ja Yong was the first to come out. She continued to inform the president that no, one had been able to pass the final level of the game Valhalla Master yet. The couple went into the blue hall. I in the center of which there was a computer chair with a table and a huge screen. Ma Young-in's face changed. Excitement and desire were red. He elegantly adjusted his round glasses and began to think about something. Chapter 2 The continuation of the story develops around the game master of Valhalla which has become one of the most popular games. It also has a single-player game, but the main one is still multiplayer. The president was sitting at a desk using a computer mouse and keyboard. The real fans of the game at the moment are more interested in single-player mode, to be specific. Ja Yong continued to observe, standing behind the control panel, in a secret level that can only be opened by playing at the highest possible difficulty. According to the data available to date, no one has ever managed to pass this stage. The man eagerly and quickly moved his fingers on the keyboard. People are wondering what motives the author is pursuing. But, the picture has moved to the computer mouse that Meng Ying clicked on. This person is not like any other, because his actions are not clear to anyone. The black-haired man continued his explanations, fervently telling that the person who led the stream is the god of the game. He was one of those who managed to win a huge number of competitions in the Game Master of Valhalla. A man who plays in lives part-time in China cursed and closed his eyes. And a girl from Japan asked a question to a guy at the computer. A blonde man with an elongated face watching a stream from the United States of America, was trying to guess what the next step would be taken by the streamer. Is the god of the game going to clear this floor in one hour? The main character threw his right hand away from the mouse and stopped typing on the keyboard. Ja Yong, standing at the recording microphone, announced aloud that the broadcast was over and thanked everyone for watching. Meng Ying leaned on the back of a creaky blue computer chair and covered his forehead with his right hand. He turned to the girl and, exhaling, said that they had succeeded. She, in turn, filling a glass with water, praised the gentleman, mentioning that Ja Yong did not think to doubt his victory. The man replied to her that it would be a shame to lose right on the air, and took a glass. The lady suggested that he record the next stream in advance. However, he gave a negative answer, explaining that he would not have the feeling that comes when they are alive. After taking a small sip, Ma Ying asked what the reviews from the audience were. 
the long-haired beauty, looking at the tablet, began to list. According to her calculations, the number of views increased dramatically and their broadcast was massively sent out. Thus, their income from video sites and advertising alone broke all records. Leaning on his knees, the main character replied that he had guessed about it and knew that everything would turn out that way. The girl positively approved and added that at the moment this news is the most important. The president, adjusting his round glasses and pulling his lips from ear to ear, explained that this is the first of two reasons why he is rich, showing the gameplay of the game on the stream. The man stood up and shoved the thumbs of both hands into the pockets of his dark jeans. Myung Ying continued to conduct a dialogue. He said that they usually conduct a live broadcast where they show fights between a celebrity and him. But today's broadcast was dedicated to cleaning the hidden level, where the main character fought against artificial intelligence. In the cabin in which they were behind a stained glass window there were three statuettes, and on the shelf were small copies of the characters of the game. The man was moving across the red carpet, as if floating, towards a brown leather chair. Ja Yong interrupted him and said that the president had already managed to gather a huge audience. However, the man waved both hands to the sides and replied that, even in this case, his parents would never understand what he was doing. The reason was that they could just spit and say that the popularity of professional gamers does not last long. Their careers are ending fast, and the cash prizes are too small. Somehow smiling sadly, Mayang Ying turned to the girl and added that it was enough that they had now, because they knew that this was not the only way to earn money. The president receives most of them for conducting broadcasts that are conducted in English for a wide audience, watching them not only in Korea but also around the world. The president plopped down in an easy chair, crossing his legs and tipping his left arm over the back of the sofa. The man felt ashamed that his parents work hard in their store. However, as their son, he knows that wealth can only cause big problems for them, and that is why he cannot help them. His gaze became more serious, and his eyelids became heavier. He didn't know how his family would react if he told them about his earnings. Suddenly, Jai Young pulled him out of his thoughts. She conveyed that the shares of the company that he had recently bought were reaching the target price. The man, leaning his head on his left hand, was insincerely surprised and said that he was thinking of selling them all, which would bring them 5 billion won. The girl congratulated the gentleman and added that Myung and never ceases to surprise her with his intuition, to which a very nice reaction of the president followed. He laughed and, answering that the heroine was overplaying, suggested that he was just lucky. But she, in turn, did not stop praising her boss. In her opinion, he is able to analyze creatively and with a special approach, and subsequently learns how successful the game will be, adding that his ability to predict the actions of the creators of the games is just fine. Meng Ying grinned and strained his eyebrows. The reader could see that he was flattered by the reaction of his subordinate. He asked to say thank you to his gaming instincts. If he just wanted to get money, he could have given up streaming a long time ago and invested everything in their investment. The man raised his hand and pulled it towards the light, adding that above all for him, he wants to preserve his career as a professional gamer. However, suddenly there was a sound. The interlocutors turned in his direction. The president asked who it was who came. He found this action and movement strange. Because their company is just a cover, they should not have visitors. The girl assumed that it was a commission agent and promised to take care of him, rushing to the door. After a moment, it opened. Someone's feet appeared on the threshold, shod in expensive leather shoes. Suddenly, to Jai Yong's surprise, three men in dark suits and black sunglasses burst into the office. The girl screamed in surprise, and Meng Ying even stood up and began to monitor the situation. Now someone's footsteps could be heard, the sounds of kicking heels. A long-legged lady appeared on the threshold, passing through a column of guards lined up. The stranger asked for forgiveness, in case her guards surprised the two. The main character was very surprised. His golden eyes became wider, and his cheeks turned pink. The girl was incredibly beautiful, dark long hair, green eyes with a golden tint and a sweet face. She was standing in front of him with her arms crossed over her chest and smiling. Meng Ying even opened his mouth from such an attractive appearance. In his thoughts, he thought that the stranger had an unusual appearance. She was wearing closed clothes. But even with that look, she seemed very charming to him. For some reason unknown to him, the president felt this. Now, in his opinion, stories about incomparable beauties who overthrew nations and empires with their appearance no longer seemed so far-fetched to him when he looked at her. A bright blush froze on his face. His eyes were watching intently, and the man himself asked a rather intriguing question. He was wondering who this girl was and what she was doing here. She, in turn, came closer and hesitantly asked the president if he was the god of games. Meng Ying did not expect that a stranger could give out something like that. Facial expressions acquired a frozen expression, hiding horror and misunderstanding. He could hear his heart pounding. Time seemed to have stopped. In his thoughts, the man pondered what he had made a mistake in, because he had made great efforts to keep his secret identity a secret, since the only thing the main character was doing was broadcasting a live broadcast. So he had a question about how the girl found out about it. Returning to real life and having detached himself from his thoughts, the president exhaled in a sign of humility and acceptance and agreed. The heroine in a blue dress began to giggle and smile sweetly. She stretched out her right hand, 
pointing her finger in the direction of her interlocutor and made him an interesting suggestion that Mayang Ying was a little surprised. The girl added that he would not be able to refuse it. The main character, before hearing about him, decided to find out who this stranger is. Xia Yang, who had been watching on the sidelines all this time, covered her mouth with her hand in confusion and anxiety and continued to silently monitor the situation. An interesting person apologized and introduced herself. Now the reader knows that her name was Chen Yura. Myung Ying repeated her name and thought that he had never heard such a thing before, which means she was not a celebrity. He was taken aback and began to reflect on the surname Chen, raising his head and supporting her chin. The girl continued, based on her words. The heroine was the second daughter of the owner of the Chingsong Company. Cold sweat rolled down the president's face, mentally exclaimed, he called this enterprise one of the largest in the Korean market. The man suggested that for this reason the stranger exudes feminine charm and elegance, just like a member of the nobility. Raising his index finger, Myung and asked what the heroine's goal was and what the second daughter of the owner of the Chingsong Company needed from him. The girl closed her eyes and after a moment asked him to become her partner. Chapter 3 The story continues from the moment when, making a puzzled face, the main character exclaimed and asked what it meant to become a partner. The man rolled his eyes and opened his mouth in anticipation, as if he was electrocuted, because the following thoughts were a little surprising. First, Myung and introduced athletes, then wrestlers and a love partner. He ordered himself to calm down and wondered why the second daughter of the owner of the Chingsong Company came to him. The man asked the girl about which area she needed a partner. As it turned out, she was talking about the game. Smiling, the heroine folded her hands and happily waited for an answer. The guy stopped short at her reaction and asked her if the girl wanted to enter the online gaming society. However, she expressed a negative decision because Chinura had a desire to play with him, to which the man was very surprised. The heroine pulled a slight smile and, closing her eyes, asked for a chance to explain everything to her. According to her, she wants to play the game of the gods with him. At this moment, the man seemed to have an epiphany. His head was visited by an idea that made him lie. He pretended to be stupid and ignorant about this game, saying that he had never heard of it before. Chinura argued that few people are allowed to play it, because it is a game where he rules the world. Raising her index finger, the girl gave a chance to her interlocutor, who did not expect that she meant a strategic competition. However, the heroine gave a negative reaction to his words, because in this game you can rule the land on which people live. An ordinary person can earn about 10 billion won, which is about 600 million rubles, thanks to luck and diligence. And he also has a chance to occupy a high position in society, for example, a city councillor, an official of the country or a prosecutor. But real wealth, in her opinion, and position are obtained in the game of the gods. The girl put her index finger raised earlier to her lip and fell silent. Meng Ying, in turn, asked her, introducing the casino, whether she talked about gambling, in which bets go to billions. Smiling, the heroine replied that the man was very close to the answer and offered to explain it better. According to her story, a thing unknown to ordinary people, what they call a field, appears in spatial faults. Ignoring the interlocutor's question, she went on to say that ordinary people cannot see them because they are open to those whom they call the chosen ones. The reader became aware that these faults appeared in different places. For example, they can occur in the subway or in the wall of a skyscraper or maybe underwater in the ocean. When the chosen ones pass through the rifts, they enter another dimension where they play various games. It seemed that the president was really thinking. Making a smart face, he asked what genre of game. And Chinura explained that this could be a game where you need to defeat the boss, but before that, you should destroy his minions and subsequently avoid deadly traps. The man suggested that such a description is suitable for games in the RPG genre. And the girl, in turn, continued that it could be just a one-on-one -on -one fight, in other cases, a battle between teams. Meng Ying tilted his head and began to think out loud, surprised by the wide variety, from the usual battle to AOS. Chinura agreed with this, adding the following lines to her answer. People protect the faults because three divine fragments can be found in them. Precious stones of blue, gold and red colors appeared before the eyes of readers. The man was surprised and repeated her words. The girl explained that the first of them is the stone of foresight, which allows someone to see the future, but how far a person can look depends on the rank of the stone itself. However, she imagined that the main character could see the exchange rate for a month ahead, or, in a war. He would be able to find out what tactics his opponent would use tomorrow. And the prediction was unmistakable, it would differ from the forecast. A person will be able to receive tons of money, or maybe create his own empire, as it was before. From surprise and anticipation, the man covered his mouth with both palms. The second, yellow, soul stone, with it someone will be able to control the mind of society, which implies the possibility that he can fake the election results. But despite this, it is difficult to control people with a strong will. However, it is easy to subordinate ordinary people, depending on the use, someone can create trust or reputation for a particular product. Based on the words of Chinura, we can say that this ability grants money and power. The third, red, stone of life. It is able to prevent aging, as well as strengthen and make the body more beautiful, 
Moreover, the stone eliminates poisons, diseases and injuries, which makes it very popular. The heroine also added that the highest ranked stone of life, according to rumors, can completely resurrect a deceased person. Meng Ying, adjusting his glasses, called it a great reward. However, the girl did not agree with his opinion, because it does not matter how rich or strong a person is, because it is useless if he is dead. The man asked her if there really was such a game, having given a positive answer. The heroine added from herself that instead of a virtual world, inside a computer game, this game exists in a field located in a spatial fault. Meng Ying stared intently at his interlocutor. His nose quickly swelled from overflowing emotions, and his eyebrows furrowed. Chen Hura sighed and asked if he needed proof, and spread her hands in different directions. She explained that the main character has no choice. He just has to believe her until they play this game together. However, she was going to show him something now. The girl raised her hand in the air in order to activate the field. The Book of Flame, Part 1 When suddenly a fireball the size of her head appeared in the air, the wind was rising around it. Jia Yang, who had been standing and silent all this time, and Myung Ying stood in a stupor and looked at this phenomenon. The girl turned to them, clarifying that she had told them that this game was not in the virtual world, but in the present. In addition to the three divine shards, there are other rewards given out to those who win the game in the rift. The girl asked if it was magic, superpowers and combat skills along with various other skills such as magic, superpowers and martial arts. Suddenly, she clenched the ball into a fist, after which gray smoke began to appear from it, adding that everyone also has their own class dot and every time someone cleans the rift, the cosmic energy that has neither color nor shape dot from the rift enters his body, and he subsequently increases his level. And depending on what class this person has, this energy in his body turns into either kai or mana or physical strength. The president interrupted her, asking if she meant that with each increase in the level, the strength of a person will grow. Praising him, Chinura added that her class elemental mage is level 25. The man, summing up the content of the dialogue, repeating that they have game classes in the real world, and the girl can use her abilities to pass the rift. Covering his mouth with his hand, the president was taken aback. His eyes opened wider, he suggested that it could be a game, but in fact, this is a real adventure in another world, with his real body and with real risks. Chapter 4 The narrative of the next chapter begins with an introduction to the course of gaming life. Games are exactly games. For the reason that everything in it is just digital information shown on the screen. Chinura gave an example that a person uses his body when he plays baseball or football, and calls sports a game. She raised her index finger and looked to the right side, tilting her head. Meng Ying, agreeing with her statement, completely closed his mouth and added that even if a girl calls it a game, but when a person really fights for a force that can rule the world, it can no longer be called a game. At least, it is no longer possible to say that a person is playing. The reason is that there may be a deadly battle with a monster from another world. As an example, the author cites several colorful scenes. For example, in the first one, a knight in silver armor is preparing for a dragon attack. On the second, the military is fighting for justice. The third shows an oil rig, and the fourth shows a huge explosion that probably happened because of people. According to the main character, this is no different from waging a war for the control of world resources. Now he turned to the girl, asking a rhetorical question that said that she called it a game of the gods. The girl expressed her point of view. The heroine referred to the conversations of other people who said that the history of mankind is really just a game for higher powers. After thinking about her words, the man asked her what a field was and where it came from. His facial expressions changed, fascination and observation appeared on his face. However, Chinura replied that she did not know about it herself. She folded her arms and looked away, mentioning the following remark, according to which some say that either demons or gods created a field and invited people to settle differences. Others say that the field is the connection between their world and the other. It seems that the girl was amused by such a conversation, because she eagerly asked if it was really important now. The interesting thing is that those who were invited to this game are the ones who get real power, power and fame. The main character agreed with her, adding on his own that it really looks like this game was created by the gods. The heroine picked up his thought and expanded it, pointing out that this happened exclusively for the gods and the chosen ones from all over the world. Ordinary people can go far with great effort, but the real rulers of this world play in their own league, with their rules and without responsibility. Chinyu returned to Myung and asked him what he thought about this, and if he now wanted to become her partner and play the game of the gods with her. In her opinion, if he succeeds, he will be able to create his own international company with global influence. Also, if he wants strength, then he will have a chance to get to the status of the president of the country. There will be no problems if he wants to become a celebrity. Holding out her right hand to him, the girl asked if he understood why she had said earlier that he would not be able to refuse this offer. The main character looked at her palm for a long time. Holding his chin, the man fell into thought. After some time, he announced that if such a game really exists, then why does she bother and tell him about it? Meng Ying adjusted the round glasses that hid his eyes, 
But by the location of his eyebrows, readers could assume that an evil grin was tried on the character's face. The girl called it a kind of investment in his talents, to which the man was surprised, pointing a finger at himself. Shinura gave an affirmative answer, adding that he was an anonymous genius and a gaming celebrity. It seemed that this knocked the hero out of reality. The heroine told him that the games he had played so far were computer games, but she decided that his intuition and judgment from these competitions would also be useful in the game of the gods. The main character grinned. However, Chinura was unperturbed. According to her words, right now he was much weaker than her. However, despite this, the girl saw in it the potential of a good income, which gives her the right to invest. From his entry into the game until he reaches a certain class and level in the game of gods, she will give him her full, sincere support. However, from his face, one could tell that the man was puzzled or even confused. The brisk heroine promised that after that they would protect high-level faults together and, showing two fingers, divide the rewards in a ratio of 60 over 40, 60 of which would belong to her. However, this can be considered compensation for her investment and inviting him to the game only for the elite. Meng Ying confirmed that he could not call it an unfair condition, because even receiving only 40%, it is an unimaginable opportunity to move up to the highest strata of society. He covered his eyes with his hands and fell silent. Jia Yang reacted questioningly to the president's words. Shen Yura reached for the inside of her dress and started taking something out. It was a partnership contract. The girl asked the main character in this case to sign it. The man and the girl looked at each other with curiosity for a long time, when suddenly he reached for the document. However, someone stopped them. Suddenly, someone shouted, demanding to stop right away. A girl with blonde hair appeared on the horizon. The trio turned in her direction and froze in anticipation. Each of them was surprised and kind of scared. The stranger wore an open blue suit with white gloves. A helicopter was flying outside their window. Noticing him, Jai Yang compared his appearance to a scene from a Hollywood movie. Myung Ying picked up on her thought and added that something was happening after her, but they didn't let him finish. The girl entered the threshold, which made the main character tremble. Then she broke the glass and jumped over the window frame. The president and his assistant independently tried to hide from the flying fragments, and Chen Yura managed to cover her bodyguards. The stranger landed right on her feet and regrouped. She turned to the main character, giving advice that he should not be fooled by his new acquaintance since she should be his partner. The man's eyes widened and he shouted questioningly. The girl introduced herself. Her name is Elizabeth Anakra. She was an honorary knight of St. Zeusbol. Meng Ying was surprised that the heroine turned out to be an aristocrat and also a knight to boot. Elizabeth, in turn, continued that she was the granddaughter of the highly respected former president, Estet's Anakar, remembering his face. The main character asked who her grandfather was, repeating her own words. The blonde was persistent. She continued to push and look for an opportunity to win over the president. Now the girl said that if he remains her partner, then he can just call her Elsa and, pointing at herself with her thumb, added that only she will be able to make a really good player out of him. Enraged by the appearance of a competitor, Chin Yura asked him not to be tempted by such unfounded promises of wealth. And Jai Yang, who wasn't even interested in what everyone was talking about, continued to look at the broken window and the wind coming out through it. Chapter 5 The narrative of the next chapter begins with a description of the confrontation between two angry girls who continued to stand and silently observe the actions of their rival. And the president, who was between them, did not even try to intervene in the situation. The first silence was interrupted by Chen Yura, who turned to the blonde and called her actions rude and ill-mannered, because she interrupted the conversation and intruded into other people's negotiations. The main character showed with a quiet movement that he was dissatisfied and even scared by what his new friend was saying. Elizabeth, in response, pretended to gasp and spoke out in the direction that she considered her actions to be right, to intervene before Chen Yura agreed with the president on a dishonest deal, to which the girl exclaimed that she came first to Myung and Si, and insisted on observing business etiquette. With a wave of her hand, she summoned red petals, which replaced her blue restrained dress with a red blouse and a black skirt. Red lines of fire flew out of her palms, which scattered sparks. Finally, she said, The Book of Flame, Volume 2, Stanza 5. After that, red and white circles were reflected in her left eye. The girl continued to cast a kind of spell. Pronouncing the fiery prison, she formed two red seals, probably because of which fire began to rotate around the blonde. Chinura turned to her, explaining that if Elizabeth did not want to fry, then it would be better for her not to move. However, the girl guaranteed that in another world she would definitely be burned. The sparks of the flame hit the brown armchair, which caused it to crack but did not catch fire. The man noticed that the flame does not set fire to furniture, aloud suggesting that the fire is not real. The dark-haired girl turned in his direction and smiled gently, throwing part of the fire into the broken window, subsequently producing a giant stream. The main character exclaimed in his thoughts that if such a small fireball has such power, then how strong is this fire wall? The blonde was still standing, surrounded by the spreading flames. Suddenly, with a gasp, the girl reached out with her right hand to the weapon that suddenly appeared. She exclaimed that the fire was disgusting. 
taking out a purple sword. Elizabeth cut through Chinura's element and rushed towards her, shouting that she would not be able to stop her lunge. For this reason she would give her a taste of defeat right now. The blonde asked her rival if she was giving up. But the girl was not afraid of the word at all, injuring herself a little, of course, purposefully. The heroine, surprising Elizabeth, showed new strength. Yellow and pink haze thickened around the aristocrat. Chinura chuckled, asking who in the end would still ask to surrender. She put her index finger to her lip and took off, summoning a parade of lights. Fiery butterflies began to appear from her ring, which later transformed into wasps, which began to fly in the direction of Elizabeth, who had prepared her sword. Jai Yang and Mai Ying hid behind the sofa and watched the situation, which was only heating up, the girls were fighting fiercely. The assistant suggested that at this rate Lady Elsa seems to lose, but the main character did not agree with her referring to the fact that she does not understand, because the aristocrat looks like she is looking for a chance to end the battle with one blow. More importantly, it's the engraving on her sword, the letters of which light up one by one. He wondered what would happen if everyone caught fire. Jia Yang asked how long this building would last without waiting for an answer. Chen Yura asked why they didn't stop, because, as she suggested, Elizabeth was indeed a very skilled knight, but this time, she was one against twenty at the same time. However, the heroine did not give up, continuing to fight off the fiery insects. The main character noticed that all the letters on her sword lit up, when suddenly, suddenly, someone knocked and then completely knocked out the wall. The girl stopped fighting for a moment and turned towards the sound when a piece of the wall fell. As it turned out, the reason was a small girl with silver-colored hair sitting on the shoulder of one of the metal men. He fell to the floor, grouped into a step pose. The stranger asked the audience if they were fighting among themselves, calling it a ridiculous gesture since she, as she put it, Severantina, was excluded from this competition on purpose. The girl sat on the back of one of the robots, crossed her legs, and began to follow the others. The girls looked at her, puzzled, but it seems that Meng Ying was already tired of the girl's antics today, because his eyebrows rose and his mouth and eyes hid fatigue. Xia Yang wasn't interested in what they were talking about because she was worried about the broken wall. Chapter 6 The narrative of the next chapter of the story begins with a description of the candidates. The first was a beautiful sorceress, Chen Yura, around whom fiery insects were circling. The second is a noble female knight holding a magic sword. But the third one was drinking tea on the sidelines. A metal man was circling around her, serving a new portion. A young arrogant princess. The man compared the current situation with Greek mythology. The goddess of love, Venus. The goddess of war, Athena. Here is the goddess of power, and yours, which was sandwiched between three goddesses. And he, in his opinion, like Prince Paris, stood in the center. In the end, his name became part of legends and myths. The third girl turned to Mai Yang-in, calling him by name, to which the guy was very surprised. The main character scratched his head and thanked the heroine for the praise. The stranger was serious, because, without even asking, she objected that the man would be her partner. The other girls were puzzled and concerned about the course of her thoughts and bold actions. Meng Ying closed his eyes and pinched his right cheek as a sign of defeat, saying out loud that this was the end. The girl with silver hair replied that there was no need to listen to the suggestions of the other candidates, because the president would not want to end up like many other popular ex-players who squandered their talents because they chose the wrong agent or coach. Elizabeth and Chinura clenched their fists and listened intently to her. The heroine continued her monologue. This time she called herself the only person who can lead men to true success, to which he was surprised. She asked if he wanted to know who she was. As it turned out, the girl was the co-director of SEC Labs in the USA, and she was also the majority shareholder of 34 companies and the owner of at least 124 patents. In addition, the stranger did not let up. The heroine was a national security advisor in the Ministry of Defense of the United States of America. The main character, grabbing his head with both hands, thought that she barely graduated from school but is already the director of the largest laboratory in the United States. A SEC Labs is a place where countless global firms are engaged in cutting-edge technologies, and many technologies are their patents. The SEC Laboratory also functions as a think tank that has a strong influence on various strategies of the government and consequently, on the whole world, which, according to the protagonist Dot is very brilliant. Adding from himself, he thought that in the old days a girl could become the strategist of the emperor. She, in turn, went on to say that in order to move up, you need to win and they need to know how to properly use the forces they have won. Pointing to herself, the girl explained that in order for this to really happen, they need someone with an excellent mind, adding that the main character will not be able to achieve this if he cooperates with these bird brains. Chinura noticed what a provocative insult her remark turned out to be. But Elizabeth reacted a little ill-mannered, menacingly asking what the girl had just said, and folded her hand into a fist. Mentally, the man said that this situation was getting out of control. Turning to the girls, he asked D.H. 
blonde and her recent rival to calm down and not destroy his building anymore. The reason was that people could write a statement about them as troublemakers. The guy sealed the hole in the window so that the wind would no longer interfere with them. The main character asked Jai Yong if the girls were real, to which she gave a positive answer because she had already quickly managed to check their biography. Jin Yura and Elizabeth were sitting on opposite sides of the brown sofa, not looking at each other. Opposite them, in a private place, was Severantina, who was eating her piece of strawberry cake sweetly. In the case of Miss Yura, Jai Young began to say she probably would not have inherited the main enterprise of the Ching Song group. However, despite this, the girl got a hotel business and has been running it since she entered college. Unlike her older brother, Miss Yura is highly respected among her employees and subcontractors for her good nature and fairness. And she also does charity work to help those in need to which the man made a thoughtful look and assumed that he had read similar stories in the news. As for Miss Elizabeth, she is really noble, besides, the girl was the granddaughter of the former president. The heroine was originally from a small country in Eastern Europe, but her family boasts a history of more than a thousand years. The main character called it amazing. As it turned out, the hardest thing was to find information about Miss Severantina, but she really was the co-director of SEC Labs. Meng Ying covered his right eye with his hand and wondered why these elites of society appeared here. In his opinion, it was much more important to keep them from fighting. The man finished his thoughts and after some time turned to all three candidates, offering to discuss it over a cup of coffee and tea because he did not want this building to collapse. Someone made the assumption that, probably, someone has already managed to write a statement. Remembering about the formation of a red wall of fire instead of a window, Chin Yura replied that the main character does not need to worry about it. She asked if he remembered her saying, activate the field, right before she showed him her incredible abilities for the first time. The man gave a positive answer. The girl added that at that moment she managed to put up a kind of barrier. Just because they were chosen to receive special abilities does not mean that they use them carelessly. Otherwise, it wouldn't be all over the news and the internet, as she put it. The main character asked what it meant. Mesura raised her index finger and continued her story, explaining that there is a rule according to which it is necessary to create a field before using her abilities. This field is created in an isolated space in which everything will remain in its place. However, whatever happens inside this space, it will not affect the real outside world, but they cannot say the same about those who get injured inside it, as if casually mentioning Elizabeth, who has only become angrier from this. The main character agreed with her statement, suggesting that it is possible to create a field, even if there are no monsters there at the moment, and nodded, covering his mouth with his hand. He was glad that they didn't have any problems, suggesting that they return to their original discussion. Shinura, with some hint, recommended that he send away these, as she put it, uninvited guests and continue from where the two left off. From such pressure, Meng Ying flushed and pursed his lips. The dialogue of these two did not last long, because someone decided to interrupt them. The speaker menacingly exclaimed who she called an uninvited guest and slammed his hand, which was wearing a white glove, on the table with such force that the tea spilled out of the mug. Elizabeth exclaimed that the fact that they arrived here a little earlier does not give them the right to deceive the main character. Severantina, humbly continuing to drink her drink, replied to her that her arguments were very stupid. She insulted her, suggesting out loud that Miss Elizabeth did not have the brains to understand that everything she was saying now would not convince the president, and ordered her to watch and study. Suddenly, the metal man put something on Myungin's eyes, which even Janura was surprised and stood up. There was a bright blue flash, and after a moment the main character was surrounded by a crowd of strangers whose faces were difficult to recognize because they were hidden by darkness. However, after a while, the main character recognized them as world billionaires, politicians and national leaders. Severantina, who appeared behind him, replied that in the end, what our hero needed was power. Suddenly, all the people standing before him prostrated themselves in front of him. In a word, the girl with silver hair explained, the masses follow those who have power and obey. That's what power really is. The man was surprised by her words, but did not answer anything, continued to listen. Now the heroine mentioned that she had previously heard that Myungin lives well enough for the working class. The main character agreed, but objected to the fact that he would not call someone like himself a working class. Severantina took into account his words and changed it to the word plebeian, which greatly puzzled the president. She suggested that he prefers the middle class. As for money, they naturally follow power, specifying whether he knows about it. The heroine added that the presidents of countries are richer than conglomerates, for the reason that they simply use secret bank accounts so that no one knows. Winking at the main character, Severantina asked him a question, asking if he had a desire to rule the world. Meng Ying covered his mouth with his hand and, laughing, wanted to say something or laugh it off, but the heroine interrupted him. In her opinion, now it may seem too big a dream, but it is quite feasible. From herself, the girl added that she would help him discover his talents and show him which games to play and how to pass them by pointing her finger at the main character. In addition, she will teach him how to use rewards and divine stones. Finally, the girl asked if he didn't want to stand with her on top of the world. 
These words puzzled the man, because he immediately thought about conquering the world. Chapter 7 The story continues. The narrative begins with a discussion according to which it is necessary to rule this world from the shadows. This is one of those ambitions that men have, which can only be realized in strategic games. A dream that is being abandoned, for the reason that in the real world it would be impossible. But if it turns out to be so, the thought stopped. The main character took off his virtual reality glasses and handed them over, thanking him in advance. He joked and said that he would have to refuse this offer. The girl stood in a stupor and asked why. Jai Yong and Elizabeth were smiling triumphantly. The man argued his actions by saying that he did not want to stand on top of this world, because it was enough for him that his family was happy and led a modest lifestyle. The main character was smiling. Readers saw the sincerity in his eyes. Mayan Ying chose games as his lifelong career, earned not much on stocks. He didn't know what could happen in his life, as it was going smoothly. However, as he noted, history changes when someone ascends to the top of the world and becomes one of the rulers. The man raised his index finger, forcing him to listen to him, and began to explain that climbing to the top means that he will have to fight with his opponents and win in order to surpass them. If this is true, then the main character will prefer to live quietly in what she calls the middle class. Myung and asked Jai Yong for another cup of coffee, which she did pretty quickly. He took a sip and thanked his secretary calling it delicious. Severantina turned red with anger and, growling, said that he could have the whole world in his hands. Then the girl pointed with her hand and added that this warm cup of coffee was not enough to satisfy her by asking the same guy, to which he gave a positive answer. Severantina continued to resist and get angry, asking a rhetorical question, according to which the true power comes from something else. Elizabeth decided to insert her word, according to which, if Mayang Ying becomes her partner, he can become the strongest. The man asked again, and the girl, in turn, continued. Now she was saying that there is no real power if a person's own strength is not the basis. Although there is a well-known phrase that says, political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. Also, as a man, wouldn't the president like to be the strongest in terms of fighting strength? Miss Elizabeth's family keeps a legendary sword from the time of Greek mythology. Inside it there is the strongest technique of the art of the sword. For this reason, if he became her partner, he would be able to get his hands on the legendary sword. Meng Ying asked if the strongest swordsmanship was even possible. The girl sighed in a sign of pride and gave a positive answer, adding that if it is something transmitted by the gods, a sword made of a material that cannot be found on earth and which is tempered in the fire of the epoch of Genesis, and transmitted by the gods to subdue the force that brings chaos to the earthly world. However, Elizabeth does not yet have the right to name the sword to the main character, but she swore on the honor of her family that if he could cope with it, the president would become the strongest warrior in the world. Her words surprised Myung in, his eyes widened and his eyebrows tightened. A phrase that causes excitement in the hearts of men. What kind of guy in his youth did not dream of becoming the strongest in the world, freely falling apart on the ground? But this dream is usually forgotten as soon as they enter adulthood. However, this blonde noble woman, as the main character put it, promised him that a long-forgotten dream could be realized. He clenched his hand into a fist and put it in front of him, which made the girl become more confident, but after a moment he thanked her and refused. What greatly puzzled her. The girl asked for what reason, the president made such a conclusion. He explained that he would be happier with a force that would be enough to protect his loved ones than to be the strongest in the world. Miss Elizabeth explained that the hero has the potential for more. In his opinion, the presence of potential does not mean that he should embody it. Meng Ying decided to make sure of the correctness of his words and asked about it, raising his index finger in the air. The blonde didn't answer anything, just ignored it angrily. The man replied that he plays computer games seriously because it is his job, but many people play just for fun. And in this, based on his remark, there is nothing wrong. Elizabeth blushed because Meng Ying did not listen to her and did not do as she planned. He, in turn, continued to talk with his arms crossed over his chest, saying that he now realized that the game of the gods is the real power ruling this world, but the guy does not want something great. The female warrior was confused and looked away. The main character suggested that the girls try to find someone else. Shinura started to get up from the brown leather sofa and address the president, adding that there were not many people who could compare with him, which made him blush. Or perhaps his reaction was provoked by the close distance between him and the girl. She was convinced of this after she saw their streams, including today's meeting. The girl called Myung in a future champion. Soon she had been looking for so long, adding that the man was just waiting for a chance to show his potential. That's all. Jin Nura appreciated it, but he still didn't want to. Assuming that's what the guy wants to say. The main character confirmed her words and looked away. The heroine added on her own so that he would know that if he managed to win the game of the gods, then the president would not only get strength and power. To this remark, Myungin replied that he had enough money, but Miss Yura was not talking about wealth, but that he would be able to get her. The man's face turned red from embarrassment. Even the other girls reacted to this with an incredibly funny reaction. The dark-haired candidate asked him to try to understand her correctly, because she did not say that the guy would receive her as a reward if he agreed to the contract. 
grabbing his hand. The heroine added that she just wants to say that when two young people become partners and spend a lot of time together, a lot can happen. The blonde blushed from the strange situation, and Severantina just brought her eyebrows and eyes to one side. She also added that the joint passage of difficult games will lead to confidence building, and she will be next to him, watch him become a wonderful and capable man. Chinura wanted to point out to him the possibility that their relationship could naturally develop into something more meaningful. The reader saw how much Myungin was worried, because he felt his heart beating and turned red like a tomato. He answered her positively. The heroine continued the dialogue, adding that since he is a college student, he does not have to return home tonight. The man thought to himself that she had said that they would spend the night together, and blushed even more. An idea occurred to him that had a curious content. What will they do all the time? Playing all night? Drinking alcohol or getting to know each other in person? Probably it was about a deeper discussion of their contract, about something completely unplanned. The heroine asked Myungin what he had decided. Mesmerized by her beauty and scent, he was faced with a choice. Absolute power or the conquest of the world, perhaps, were two simple concepts. However, spending the night with a gorgeous girl is a pretty realistic temptation. The main character was a black sheep and never received a chocolate bar on Valentine's Day. He was also not close to any other girl except his sister. But now he, the character, did not have time to finish his remark because a call came to his phone. Chapter 8 The story of the next chapter begins with a man reaching for his phone and seeing his sister's name. He asked Hai Yi Ying what happened, to which the girl replied with a question. She was wondering if she needed to cook dinner or if the president would eat somewhere else. Meng Ying looked towards the mysterious trio and said he would be home for dinner. The heroine gave an affirmative sign that she would be waiting for him. The man's face changed. The radiance in his eyes changed to misunderstanding. Chinura turned to him questioningly, and he, in turn, explained that he was going home to have dinner with his sister, so he suggested ending on this note. The heroine asked with confusion what he was talking about. The main character was grateful to her for the offer, but there is a proverb that says, a pine caterpillar can only survive on pine needles. The president covered his forehead with his left hand and lowered his gaze. His family of four lives a peaceful life, so there is no need to become the strongest in the world or conquer it. With the next remark, his face took on an embarrassing look. As for romance, he expressed himself in an official way. In his opinion, romance, which is a little more mundane at times, is better for him. Relationships that overcome all kinds of crises with adventures aimed at discovering beauty and gaining superiority over the world. Based on his thoughts, it sounded amazing like an excerpt from a movie, but it's too heavy a burden for him. The man suggested that the girls look for someone else. Besides, there are many star players like him. The girls were upset and at the same time puzzled by his words. Myung Ying finally said that he was going to leave early and asked to escort the guests, to which Jai Young asked if she should accompany him home. The man gave a negative answer and left the girls in thought. Yi Ying, who had already prepared dinner, decided to taste it. After taking a small bite, she exclaimed admiringly that it turned out just amazing and suggested that her older brother would like it. The girl hoped that she would be able to cheer up her appa with this dish, since she herself believed that it was completely her fault for what happened in the morning. Just because the heroine was making progress in her studies, her parents loved her more than her brother. If she hadn't been there then, he would most likely have received all their love as an only child in the family. Therefore, Yi Ying asked herself what she should do. If she deliberately failed the exam, how would it affect her parents as they would definitely throw a tantrum? In her opinion, if the main character's sister does this, then they will think that Appa is to blame for everything and they will punish him more. The girl would like to help him somehow, but that's all she could. While waiting, Yi Ying put her head on the table and looked at the finished dinner. When suddenly someone's hand grabbed the food, the heroine turned in the direction of this maneuver. As it turned out, Mai Ying Ying was already at home, he replied that it was really delicious. The girl jumped up from the table and asked if he had washed his hands. The man gave a positive answer and supplemented his previous answer, saying that her homemade anarizushi is much better than those that are sold in the store. The main character smiled from ear to ear and gave a thumbs up. Yi Ying was pleased with her brother's reaction. Laughing, she promised that next time she would make a bigger portion for him. The heroine suggested to him that she once again try to talk to her father about his studies. But Mai Ying said that the girl was not even worried about it. Because, fortunately, he managed to sell one of his things, having received a very large sum for it at auction. The heroine was surprised, asking if this was really the case. The guy answered in the affirmative, adding that he still has past earnings, so as soon as he is paid, he will be able to cover the costs of his studies for this semester. Yi Ying beamed with happiness. Folding her hands and leaning them against her chin, she was sincerely happy for her brother and said that the idea sounded great. 
Myung Ying looked at her and smiled, indicating that she should not worry. However, for the next semester, he worries that this time will come. Their father may change his mind, so no one knows for sure, and things may change for the better at the convenience store. The man continued to devour the food prepared by his sister, who, in turn, was embarrassed and agreed with him. The main character fell into reflections, according to which his stunning meeting with three beautiful and talented girls was just a dream. He has his own problems, in his own world. If something goes wrong during the Game of the Gods, he can involve his relatives and sister in trouble. In his thoughts, the president asked himself that isn't he quite successful now because he owns a building at his age. So, his daily life will return to normal from tomorrow, or not. Standing in front of a building, the main character fell into a stupor, despite the fact that the people around him were surprised by some kind of spectacle. The problem, and perhaps vice versa, was the mysterious trio that was waiting for him on the street. Lion Ying was very puzzled, but a crowd of people were taking pictures of such beautiful girls. Chinura said she was glad to see him again and winked with her right eye. Miss Elizabeth, in turn, asked if this building was his school, and Severantina was negatively puzzled. She decided to clarify what the main character could learn in such a school in general. The president was curious about what they were doing here, and each of them replied that they had come to see him. He, in turn, did not let up from anger. The man spread his hands in different directions, explaining his behavior by the fact that the girls left yesterday. Nisura decided to answer first. The girl folded her hands and gave the answer that they are not the kind who just give up. Elizabeth agreed with her statement, adding that the fight to convince him had just begun. And Severantina, drinking tea, said that big ambitions usually come with great difficulties. In his thoughts, the man was terribly upset. He grabbed his head with both hands and opened his mouth wide in a quiet scream, deciding to break the silence and inner hysteria. The protagonist continued the dialogue, saying that their intrusion into his school life is wrong because they should understand that he still needs to finish his studies. Myung Ying asked them to wait for him in the office. In case they refused, he threatened with his index finger, the hero would get very angry. Chinura asked if this meant that the man would be in the office later, to which the main character replied that he was not going to run away. Miss Elizabeth said out loud that she took his word for it, and Severantina, throwing down the cup, exclaimed that despite the fact that they had spent a lot of time, he was worth it. An idea came to the man's head, according to which he was interested in how best he could get out of this situation. It's like paying off a loan, a credit card from a loan shark. However, escaping won't solve the problem. If he breaks his promise, the girls will find him at school or even decide to come to his house, and his family finds out about his secretive life, and in the worst case, the fragile world of his family can collapse overnight. Meng Ying mentally promised himself not to let this happen. No matter what, he'll finish it right here in the office. Chapter 9 the narrative of the next chapter returns to the Mengen building, inside which the actions actually take place. The man asked to be allowed to clarify. He is not at all interested in what is going on in this game of the gods. The main character was sitting in a chair and shouting menacingly, staring at the girls. He asked them if they hadn't heard about Alexander, the one who conquered the whole world, and about the poor philosopher who didn't care about it. Severantina assumed that the main character was talking about Diogenes and added from herself, the man does not actually know what it looks like, and until he tries to play the game of the gods, he will not understand what it feels like. Meng Ying agreed with her statement, but the girl interrupted him, continuing to say that he was just afraid of the unknown, and asked him a question that said whether he was sure that he was not interested in it at all. The main character wondered if the girl meant that he should try at least once, to which Chinura enthusiastically gave a positive answer and aloud suggested that he consider it as a test, and subsequently make a decision for himself. It might seem to readers that the president did not know how to react correctly to the girl's words. Therefore, the man waved his hand, as if pulling her to him, and, looking at the refined figure of his interlocutor, replied that perhaps she was right. The heroine did not notice what an embarrassment was happening with Ma Young-in, so she just continued the dialogue, adding that he would probably like it after he tried it. She took his hand and asked if he was curious, and he, in turn, withdrew his limb and made it clear to her that he fully agreed with her opinion. Miss Elizabeth talked about how it was a sincere request from each of them so the least he could do was take it seriously. How could it seem that the girls were united for a while? Because they pursued the same goals. Prudent and calm Severantina added to the words of her rivals that fortunately she has an excellent dungeon for such a case, and snapped her fingers. The metal man standing behind her all this time reacted to the gesture of the hostess. A bright light appeared from his eyes, like a trace from a projector. A picture of the city appeared on the screen. Everyone rushed and looked in her direction. The heroine with silver hair asked the main character a question according to which she wanted to know if he could see how the field in the spatial crack was turning green. A spot of green and black colors appeared on the screen, so the man responded positively. According to Severantina, they should have finished the explanation yesterday, because the color in the crack was an important indicator. She pointed her finger at the next image and continued. The picture changed, now there was another spot on it. The red color meant a great danger, where there is actually a high chance of dying. However, 
The rewards there are quite valuable, but many players avoid playing in the red zone. On the other hand, the green color indicated a fairly safe signal. Where everything will be fine if you lose, they call it green zones. The main character asked if this was really true. The girl positively rejected and supplemented her answer, telling that if someone fails in the green zone, the punishment will not allow him to go back into it. But this is not a big loss. Myung Ying ruled with a puzzled face that at least it was safe. It was for this reason that Severantina ordered him to hurry. She continued her explanation, basically. The one who enters the green zone first gets an advantage, so that at the moment of detection, all the chosen ones try to enter first. Sharpness and surprise were reflected on the face of the president, who was interested that even if someone loses, he will just be excluded. The man covered his mouth with his hand and continued listening. The heroine agreed with his assumption, pointing out that this is the biggest difference between the red and green zones. The failure of the green zone means that someone has received only an exception for this zone. However, if he ends up successful, he will receive more power and a divine stone as a reward. The main character thought seriously, interrupting his thoughts. Chin Yura invited Myung in to come in together and go through the game, indicating that the computer game may be a little realistic, but it is much more interesting in the real world. It's like the difference between a char simulator at home and a char on the field, to which the man adjusted his round glasses and made it clear that he understood what she was talking about. The dark-haired girl explained that in order to plunge into a real adventure, you need to fight with real monsters. Pave your own way in a real dungeon, and in the end, his reward will be the power that controls the world. In the end, the hero will like it after he plays. Miss Elizabeth folded her arms and invited the main character to play at least once, since he would have a chance to make a decision later, to which he replied that he had no choice. It was a rhetorical question. Xia Yang decided to dilute the dialogue, adding from herself that ideal men are always in demand among women. However, the man made it clear that he had never had such a thing before. His assistant argued that the reason for this is that he always stayed away from female representatives. The main character took a deep breath and made it clear that he had caught the essence of the conversation. However, this is just for once. If in the end, he still decides that this is not for him, he would like the guys to give up too. The girl with silver hair was taken aback and said that, in that case, they need to hurry up before everything is taken away. The man strongly agreed. The picture shifts the reader's attention to the green crack. Now the narrative is being conducted around the mother of the main character, who shouted negatively that someone could not do something, it is not yet clear to the reader who she is addressing. The woman ordered to stay away from her. A fiery sword appeared on her horizon, rushing towards her. The green crack began to grow. The five guys came closer to her. Severantina, sitting on the shoulder of a metal man, decided to interrupt the silence first. She said that the reason why this happens is the fact that the girls invited the main character to the game. Myung Ying replied that he found it real here. The girl with silver hair gave a positive reaction, adding that now he has a zero level, like any ordinary person, and yes, the first visit with them, he will raise his level to the first. However, now the man must decide. After asking if this was his level, he continued to listen carefully. The metal man lowered the heroine to the floor, who said that his decision would be after overcoming the first game, because right now he is just a beginner. Only two people can enter this dungeon, and one of them is Myung Ying himself, so he has to decide who will be the second. What choice will the main character make? and who will be his partner. Chapter 10 The action of the next chapter begins with the fact that talented and unusual girls faced a difficult choice of the main character. Severantina, manipulating him, made him understand that she would be the right one, and winked. However, Miss Elizabeth disagreed with her and asked who told her about it. The heroine pointed her thumb at herself and asked Myungin if he wanted to fail his first assignment. It was a rhetorical question, because only she could guarantee his victory. Shinura approached the main character and grabbed his hand. She knew that he was the one who made the choice. But wouldn't it be right, in her opinion, to choose her, for the simple reason that she came first? The girl made a seductive face, covering her left eye and smiling, causing a blush to appear. Myung Ying fell into his thoughts. Three beautiful and charming ladies asked him to choose only one of them. He didn't know if it was heaven or hell. The man pulled his hand away from embarrassment, thereby loosening Miss Yura's grip, and, after exhaling, finally decided to make a decision, but with the help of an improvised object. He picked up his phone and showed it to the heroines. There was some kind of game on his screen. Miss Chen winked at our main character and said out loud that there was nothing to be done. Elizabeth agreed and decided to leave everything to fate. However, Severantina could not believe that the man ignored the best choice and left it to chance, but despite this, the girl respected his choice. As it turned out, Chen Yura won. She suggested to Myung and to go inside as soon as possible and leave the girls to sit down and watch. The winner grabbed the president's hand and waved to the losers. The girl thought that luck was on her side and assumed that it was Annie who was helping her. Chen Yura remembered a story from her life. She was in the hospital and sat next to a sleeping woman. Then the girl told her that it looked like this time she had managed to find a guy she could trust. However, as it turned out, she had competitors. The others also highlighted his potential at the same moment as the girl. It was permissible, because she has no choice and circumstances do not allow. 
It seemed to Chinura that the woman had just said something. She asked her to repeat it. The girl assumed that her neighbor said chocolate bar or fish pie. However, time was running out, so the dark-haired heroine apologized and said goodbye, because if she didn't go now, then those two could steal it from her. In her opinion, that guy had great prospects. It was for this simple reason that Chinura could not afford to lose him. One day, together with him, they will clear all the dungeons and get the stones of life, with which the girl will be able to heal this woman, so thought Miss. The heroine was sure that she did not have time, or rather could not finish, adding that she should not cry when she needed to look her best. The girl promised to come back and close the door. Now she was back in reality, where these two were standing in the middle of a green clearing. Chinura said that this is a clean place with untouched nature, unfortunately, there is air pollution in Seoul. Asking myself, doesn't it give a certain sense of another dimension? And comparing it with arriving at the resort, with the amazing scenery around, the man adjusted his glasses and ordered himself to pull himself together. Because if he participated in this game of the gods, his sister would eventually get involved in this matter, he was sure of it, as long as the main character keeps his double life a secret from his family. However, what did Meng Ying hope to gain in this game of the gods? The man decided that after that he would need to sever ties with these girls. The heroines believed that he could win, judging by his experience in computer games. However, if they don't get what they expected from him, then they will simply lose interest in him. Therefore, the president decided to disappoint them in today's fight, without giving the impression that he is doing it on purpose. His thoughts were interrupted by Chin Yura. The girl asked why they should not have a snack here before starting, and showed the basket to which the guy was very surprised and clarified exactly where, and without even starting the game. The winner asked if people didn't drink a cup of coffee before starting work, and he didn't even object to that. The girl made sandwiches and drinks, based on her words. There may be a commotion as soon as they start the game, so I decided to have a snack. Myung Ying thought it would be rude to ignore her efforts, so he took a bite. He liked it, so he asked if the cook had cooked it. Miss Yura was very glad that he liked her homemade sandwiches. As it turned out, the girl loved to cook, and it makes her happier when people close to her like her cooking. The man compared her to his younger sister. The heroine suggested that she also loves cooking. Myung and replied that although their parents tell her to focus on her studies as much as possible, the girl said that she would be glad to meet her, but the guy gave a negative answer. He reflected on the fact that next to her he had the feeling of a picnic in the fresh air. Just like the very first date, it may be another dimension inside the game of the gods. But still the man felt good, sitting like this in the open nature. Miss Chen asked how long ago it was, and received a positive response. The main character asked about the girl's partners from the previous games, but she said that they were not there. As it turned out, Myung will be her first. He was confused by her words, and from himself he added that the heroine should be with other players. Did she really play alone all this time? Chinura said out loud that she joined the team for mutual benefit, but this is the first time she has been looking for a partner on a permanent basis. The president was surprised because he assumed that the heroine was very popular because of her attractive appearance. The girl replied that this was not true, because she did not remember guys who would have approached her since elementary school, saying that she tried to be more charming, but she had not yet seen the results. However, Chinura guessed that she was a problem. The man thought that when her fans find out that the heroine is the direct heir of the Chingsong group, he doubts that any guy will be able to approach her. The girl continued her story by asking the main character if he thinks of her as an attractive lady. Myung Ying thought that she was too defenseless, but he answered out loud that she was. Therefore, Chin Yura said that her efforts are bearing fruit. The president asked if they should start already, but Miss replied that there are no restrictions in the game, so they should not hurry because no one can interfere. Elizabeth and Severantina, who had been following the couple all this time, angrily watched what the two were doing instead of starting the game. 